Today we are going to build a Twitter clone with Next.js, React, MongoDB and Tailwind CSS. But first, let me show you a demo. I hope you are going to enjoy this project, but before we begin, please do me a huge favor and hit that like button. It helps my channel grow and it gives me a lot of motivation to create more videos for you guys. All right, so we are going to start by creating a new Next app. So let's do npx create Next app and let's call this one Twitter clone. Okay, now it's installed. Let's get inside. So see there and the Twitter clone like this. Now we want to add some uh, Tailwind CSS. So let's, uh, I will actually use yarn instead of npm. So I will do yarn, add, and now Tailwind CSS, post CSS and auto prefixer like this. Now I need to do this npx Tailwind CSS in it like this. Now we can actually open our project and add this code. So I will close my terminal. So now, as you can see, I have opened our project inside the IDE. So now let's go to our Tailwind config. It's here. And as you can see, we need to add this, those paths inside the content. So here inside, let's add those two paths like this. So Tailwind will know files uh, it should look for. Now we need to go to globals and add those. So let's go to styles, globals, and let's get rid of all this and let's just put this and uh, we can get rid of this whole module CSS. We don't need this. Let's do delete. Okay. All right. Now let's uh, open pages and index.js and uh, let's get rid of all this and think we just need an empty return here so we can start with an empty function like this and let's say it will return just a div with a test inside. All right, so now let's try to start our app to see if it works. So let's do just yarn dev and it started here, localhost 3000. Yeah, and we have our test here. All right, so uh, for our homepage, what do we need to start with? I think that we should actually start with some authentication. So our first page should actually be like a login page so we can see the homepage. And at home page, we should see the latest posts of the people we follow. So let's maybe create a new page here and let's call this one login.js, right? And here let's do just export default function login page. And let's return maybe here just a div with login page here, right? And uh, let's see slash login. Yeah. And now let's add some authentication. So I think the quickest way would be to use next auth. So in my terminal, I will do just um, yarn add next auth. Now let's open a uh, next auth uh, documentation so we can add it. So next auth getting started. And uh, here, as you can see inside pages API auth, we need to add to this file. So let's go inside API. We need to create a directory called auth. And inside this directory, we need to create this file with those uh, square brackets and everything. So it's new file, uh, open square brackets, dot, 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 next of dot, oops, closing dot JS. And the reason for this, for those uh, brackets here is, so this API endpoint will get all the requests that are slash of slash and anything, right? So uh, let's, here inside, let's just put this for now. But uh, actually, we are not going to use GitHub provider. And instead, we are, we are going to use uh, Google authentication as uh, Twitter does. So instead of GitHub provider, I will get a Google provider like this. And now let's also rename this GitHub provider to Google provider. Yes. And let's see in the documentation what Google provider needs providers. And let's scroll down to Google. And um, as you can see, we need client ID and client secret. So let's go to Google, Google developer console, and I will create a new project. Let's call this one uh, Twitter clone 
David. And uh, let's create this one. Let's uh, create credentials for OAuth client ID. And we need to configure consent screen first. So let's do external and let's do Twitter clone David as an app name. Uh, my email, yes. We don't need any logo for now. Um, for domain, let's just for safety add the local host 3000 without HTTP. Now we can skip this. Now here just an email so we can continue. And we need to add a scope. And uh, let's say we only need email and profile information. Now let's click here, update. Let's do save and continue. Save and continue. Back to dashboard and the credentials. Let's try now to create credentials for of client ID. Application type, web application, name, it doesn't matter. Authorize redirect URL URIs. Here let's do HTTP local host 3000. Do we need any other? Yeah, let's add this one like this. And uh, I think that's all. Let's uh, create. And here we have our credentials. So I will copy this one. And uh, we can actually put this inside our env file if we have it. But uh, I don't think we do. So uh, inside our directory, I will put a new file, that env. And here I will do, I will put those uh, Google client ID and uh, Google secret ID. So let's do Google client ID equals this and Google client secret will be this one. All right, so now we can uh, close this and uh, back to our configuration uh, inside pages, API auth, we have this next auth and we need to change this to client ID and client secret here, yeah. And this should work. We can get rid of this comment here and this one as well. Let's see, do we need anything else? No. So as it is now, it should work with API of sign in page. So as you can see, we have this sign in with Google page and, but actually we want to make it prettier. So we will do our sign in button inside the login page. But before we do this, let's add some more global styles. I would prefer to everything to be black. So we have this dark, uh, dark skin for Twitter. So let's do just body and let's do background color to be black and the color of the text to be white as a default. Yeah, now let's go back to our login page. And in here we want to have a pretty button in the middle of our screen with saying login with Google. So let's create this one first. Let's try by positioning this text in the middle first. So I will add the class names and let's say it will be flex items center and um, justify center. And we need to make it 100% in half. So let's do half screen. Yeah. And I will just make some adjustments here. Yeah. And now let's, uh, we want to list all the possible provider buttons, not only for Google. So uh, next off is actually providing here uh, all providers as an array and it can be used inside get server props. So um, maybe it's a little complicated, but it's really simple. Let's create a new function here and get server side props, server side props, and let's get our providers. And it's just get providers from our next auth react. So now we can just do a return and here inside the props, for this component, we are going to pass those props. And here we will just add the providers, providers like this. So now we can add the providers here. And now let's try to loop through them and show them as buttons. So instead of this text, let's do object values, providers, and let's map through them for each provider. We want to create the div. And inside this div, we'll have a button saying sign in with and the provider name. Oops, name. This didn't work. Let's see why do we need a context here? No, maybe we just need to restart our app. 
Yes, now it works. And we have this sign in with Google, but I will actually style it first. So class name. And uh, in here we want to create like Twitter like button. So uh, we actually need some uh, Twitter colors. Uh, so let's open Twitter and uh, let's see if I log out. Let's maybe put color like this one. It's gray or white ish. So I will copy this one. Yeah, they are using the same white color for the text, I think. So I will search for this one color. And let's see, it's this. I will change this to earth hex. Yes. And uh, now I will add it to my Tailwind config so we can reuse it. So let's do extend and here we can put colors and uh, how we can uh, name this uh, color here. Let's maybe call this one Twitter white. So it's almost white Twitter ish. We have hashtag here on the beginning. Do we need uh, more colors? Yes, I think we do. And uh, we actually will need this blue ish color for uh, thing like everything. So uh, let's try to pick it from here, maybe from this button. Yeah. And let's add it here. Twitter blue like this. Oops, only one hashtag here. Do we need any more colors? Uh, yes, I think we need some gray colors. I would like to have this border color here. As you can see, they have like grayish color here for borders. So I will try to select this. Let's see, computer here and let's see where the border is lying. Do we have any border here? No, here is our border color. So let's see, here we have our border color. I will change it to hex and uh, let's call this one Twitter border and uh, this. Yeah. And uh, do we need any more colors? Here is this kind of white. This one is uh, like a light gray and uh, even this light gray text here. So maybe let's copy this one and uh, let's see how we can get this. Maybe from here, let's copy this. And uh, for this, let's call this one light gray. So Twitter, uh, light gray and uh, paste. I forgot about hashtag here. And uh, I also want this dark gray from here, just to be sure. So let's copy this one. And uh, here, let's do Twitter dark gray. Yeah. And uh, I think we have uh, all colors we need. So let's go back to our page here. And uh, maybe we need to restart our app. So I will do this now. So we'll get all the colors. Now let's go to login.js. And uh, here uh, we want to make this button prettier. So let's start with maybe a background color. So let's do a background and Twitter white. Yes. Let's add some padding on the sides of five padding from the top and the bottom too. Yeah. And um, what else? Let's make the text uh, black. Yeah. Uh, rounded corner. So let's do rounded full. Yeah. And uh, I think that looks really nice. Uh, but the only thing I miss here is a Google icon. So I will go to images and I will search for Google icon. And maybe from here for icon finder, we need a PNG. This one will be enough. And uh, we have our PNG. Let's put it inside the public directory. So let's put it here. Let's just rename this from this weird name to just Google and back to our login page. And let's put this inside our button. So let's do EMG and uh, let's open our page here. And uh, let's see EMG source will be just google.png, I think. Yeah, this worked. And now for class names, let's make it smaller. So let's do a half of, I don't know, two. That's super small, 16. That's the big 14 or maybe like uh, eight will work. Yeah. Now we want to put it in line with our text here. So let's maybe make the button flex. Yeah. And uh, this worked. Let's add flex uh, items center. Yeah. This looks uh, really nice. But maybe I can decrease the padding from the left and add some more padding on the right. So instead of five padding on uh, both sides, let's do padding left of uh, two and padding right of five. Yeah, I think this looks uh, much nicer. We can maybe increase to three here. This will work. So um, 
Now maybe let's try to log in. So as you can see, nothing happens because on this button, we don't have any on-click action, but uh, we can add it. So let's do on-click and uh, here we'll create the empty uh, function and uh, let's just do sign, sign in and let's import this function from uh, next of react and here we just need to pass provider id so let's do provider that id and this one is saying that uh, it is a promise so let's maybe just do a wait here and uh, let's add async here yeah so uh, now maybe let's try to log in yeah it works i will log in with my account and uh, i think it worked but we don't see anything so um let's check our session so uh, to get session we just do uh, use session but uh, we are actually not saving it anywhere so this will not work for now because as you can see in the documentation here we have both providers here but we forgot about adapters and adapters are about where you want to store your data so i will go uh, with mongodb so uh, let's go back to next auth and uh, first we need to add this adapter so uh, i will copy this and i will do yarn add and uh, add those stuff and uh, first as you can see they need to have like a mongodb connection that will be persistent for this file and so then we can use it inside our configuration so i will actually copy this and put it where they want to have it in inside lib mongodb.js so let's create a new directory called lib and here inside we need to create mongodb oops db.js and we just paste everything here we get some warnings but that's okay and uh, as you can see we need to have a mongodb URI inside our dot env file dot env so we need to have a mongodb database somewhere so i think i will actually go with and create a database inside mongo atlas so uh, mongo atlas so we will have a free database and let's now just sign in here to my account all right so uh, i would like to create a new project and i will call this one twitter clone next project opener is me create project and now as you can see the database is protected also not only by password but also by ip addresses so i will add my current ip address to the configuration yeah so even if you guys grab this uh, url from here you will not able to access uh, the database so let's build a database and we will go with the free version so let's create this one and uh, let's see provider yeah aws stockholm this is where i am and everything looks fine so i will just hit uh, create here at the bottom now username and the password and uh, i will use my name and uh, for password let's just generate i will generate with uh, like this and i will put it here okay this one is too complicated so let's use what they suggest and now let's create user i hope we will get the link finish and close go to databases and no we don't we didn't get the link but let's see here connect let's see here and we need this kind of link but let's go back connect your application yeah we need this but we don't get the password uh, but we are going to reset this so inside our env let's create a mongo i think it was mongo uri let's see here and uh, yes it's mongo uri so let's do equals and paste this link but now we need to replace our password so i'll close this database access probably here let's edit our user and i want to add the password so uh, let's do like this and uh, i will do david123 david i can actually show the password and now let's just copy and update the user and now instead of this password we can put it uh like this david123 david and uh, we have our link so um now maybe let's go and uh, finish our next auth configuration we need this adapter for mongodb we have this 
So this should work. And now we can add this Mongo adapter. So let's try to put this inside our configuration. So here, adapter and this. But with this thing, we need to import. So like this, and now it is imported. Let's add some space here. And the client promise, we need also this. And client promise will be actually a connection to our database that we created here. All right, and this should work. Let's try to restart our app. And uh, let's go back to login.js and uh, let's try to use our session. So let's do a const and uh, he will put all the data from our session. So let's use session and uh, here inside uh, we need data and maybe status. And let's console log, console log both. So let's do data and status. Now let's see with our app. Let's refresh. All right, uh, use session must be wrapped inside session provider. Yeah, I think we missed some uh, configuration. So let's go back to getting started. We have these providers, but we forgot to update our app.js here. And as you can see, we need this session provider. So let's put our uh, app inside the session provider. So let's add brackets here and uh, yeah, we can just copy all of this, put it here. We don't need this thing. Session provider works, but we need to import it. So I'll import it like this. And the session is not, is missing. So we need to get those two. Instead of component A and page props, we will actually get several things. Component, page props, and here inside we have session and other page props. So, um, this should work now. Let's see. Does it work? Still nothing. And uh, let's try to restart our app. Let's see if we missed something. No. Let's see our database. If we have anything, let's open the database. Let's browse collections. No. And uh, let's restart our cookies. So I will go to application and here clear site data. So still we don't get any providers inside our login page. Okay, so I think it has some problem with connection to our database. If I refresh the page, as you can see, we have a lot of errors. But uh, on the beginning, it says, uh, please add uh, your Mongo URI to env local. It should work with just env. But uh, let's see, MongoDB, and it should be this MongoDB URI. And uh, we have just Mongo URI. Yeah, it was just a naming. So let's restart our app once again. And let's refresh now. Yeah, we have our button. Let's go to login page. Let's sign in with Google. I'll pick my user here. And we get some data from session. So let's see. Um, inside data, we have a user. And it's my user with my uh, image here. So if I copy this one and open in a new tab, here we have our uh, image to our user. And uh, let's also see inside our database. So we have a connections, collections here, and we have a accounts, user and sessions. I think that I don't want to have sessions inside. Uh, ah, okay, it's okay to have sessions here. Yeah, this would this would work. Uh, actually, I think it would be nicer to have a, to use uh, JSON web tokens, and I think it would be faster too. So inside our configuration of next out, and uh, we also actually need to provide the name of our login page. So let's do pages, and here. Uh, let's do sign in will be slash login. And the next thing is that for session, uh, we want to use strategy of JSON W, uh, JSON web token and not the database. That's a JSON web token. And uh, yeah, now let's see. Uh, here inside our database, we have users and accounts. And the difference is that uh, one user can have different many accounts. So I have one user, but uh, it can has it can it can has accounts in uh, Google and Twitter, and we can have those accounts here. So now we have only one account and one user. But if I would add another 
provider for signing in, I could have uh, several accounts here for my user because uh, those will be with the same email. But uh, yeah, let's see. We have our user here. I will make this uh, window a little bigger. And uh, this is our user. And uh, the only, let's see, we have name, email, image, same thing that we have here inside our session. But the only thing we miss is the user ID. And I think it's really important because, uh, yeah, ID is how we identify our user. If we add other uh, collections, posts, or anything else, we want to know what user has a post or did something inside our system. So uh, to add an uh, ID to our session, there is a trick for doing this. So here inside, we can update actually callbacks, which means uh, we can change how our, uh, for example, session is created. So for session, let's uh, put the async function here. Async function, let's maybe do like this with arrow function. And uh, here inside as params, we get stuff like token and session. And uh, the only thing we need to do here, uh, well, actually we don't need to add this callbacks if we don't need ID, but I really need user ID. So uh, here where when we are creating our session, um, the most important is that we just return a session to make it work. But then if if we have a session and we have user inside, and then we want to add something to this user inside session. So uh, let's also check that inside the token, we have token and then let's maybe just console log what we have inside our token. Yeah, so I will clean everything that uh, we have inside the app. So no cookies and uh, I will refresh and I will restart my app. Now let's sign in with Google again and let's see. Yeah, uh, as you can see, this is our token, JSON web token. So uh, we get a uh, name, email and picture, but we don't get the ID. Let's see how the ID looks like. Uh, it ends with, let's see, it ends with 75 here. So as you can see, here we have the ID of our user inside this sub. So I will actually grab this from token. Uh, sorry, it was sub here. And I will assign this to our session user. So let's do session user that id equals this token sub and let's just make sure that we have it here sub yeah and uh, that should that should work so now let's clear the cookies once again clear site data and uh, let's try to sign in again with my account and let's see data i'll make it bigger we have data here user and as you can see now we have the id so that is really good because we are going to need this. Right, but uh, now we are signed in and we know this inside our login page because inside this data we have a user object. So let's get rid of this console log. So what do we want to do? First, we want maybe to check if there's any session loading, if we are fetching information about uh, our session and it's inside here, inside status. And as you can see, it can be authenticated, unauthenticated or loading. So I would just check if it's loading, if status is loading, then uh, we don't want to show anything, even even is even this button. So we we'll just return an empty string. But then if we are authenticated, so we have data user, user, and uh, then we want to redirect to our homepage. So um, we could actually just check for just the data. So uh, we want to here redirect to our homepage, just slash lot slash login. So let's import our router. Let's do const router equals use router from next router. Yes. And now we can do router push and let's go to just homepage like this. So now as you can see, it has redirected us to the homepage and we get this test because we get this test from here, from the index page. All right, so now we are logged in and uh, what do we want to see on our homepage? Well, the first thing we actually need with our Twitter, and I know it can be boring, is that inside our user, we don't have any username. We have email, image, and name, but for Twitter accounts, we need usernames. Uh, for example, if I open this one, 
this is the username for this account and uh, for my this account it's uh, this name with four on the end so for each user we need to check if the user has a username because for now as you can see our user doesn't have any username and we need this username um so it's the same thing here if i log out from twitter let's just log out and let's log in with i created some temporary accounts here with jane jones and as you can see twitter is asking us for some date birth date and then when we log in what should we call you username and we need to add username so let's add something similar to our app so here first inside our home we need to get all the information about our user and uh, the thing is that even if we get our session information the session information will not have all the updated values the session information that we get from use session will get only the values that were fetched during the login so if we use the session information here if we update our username we will still not see it inside our session so instead we need to grab this all user information here on our home page so um let's maybe just create a function called uh, get user info and uh, this function will just fetch uh, information about user so uh, let's say it will go to api slash users and then the id of the user and uh, well let's first grab the uh, user id so um let's grab our session so this is const data data and status from use session and uh, we have we can maybe rename this data to something like session um, and here to get our id for our user i will do just session user id and now let's see if this uh, fetch will work so i will use effect here use effect and here an empty arrow function no dependencies and let's run this when we open our home page so let's run our get user info right now let's see if this works i'll inspect here network let's see we get some error okay we are trying to read user but it's undefined because uh, it's not loaded yet so let's check that uh, that we have a user so here uh we actually will have a dependency here it will be dependency on the status and here inside our function we need to check that if status is uh, loading and then we will just do nothing here we can do triple equals here right and uh, now let's see we don't get any errors and we are hitting users but we are getting 404 because we need to add this endpoint that will return user information about user with this id all right so uh, let's uh, go to api and uh, here we can just create a new file called users.js and in here we just need to add a function and we need to export this function as default export function let's call this one maybe handle because this is what they are using for all api endpoints the name it actually doesn't matter so let's do it. here we get actually request and response and uh, we can actually test with response sync with just a json saying okay to see if it works yeah we have users preview okay but actually we need to fetch information about the user uh so i think that for our database connections and uh, fetching information we are actually going to use uh, mongoose so i will open terminal and now let's yarn add mongoose yeah and uh, well first inside our handle we need to connect to our database so we can do mongoose oops uh yeah import mongoose and uh, connect and here we just need process and and our mongodb uri like this but actually we are going to reuse this so i will cut it from here and i will put it somewhere else i will put it inside our libs i will create a new file called mongoose.js and here i would just do export default maybe not default just export function init mongoose 
and I will just return this connection with await. But now we need to add async here because this function is async. So this will work for now. We can do go back to users and we can do init mongoose. We need to add await here and async here. Yeah. And now we can actually use our mongoose. But uh, before we will go deeper with creating models for our users, I will actually go back to init mongoose. And uh, the thing here is actually that every time our app reloads, when we change something, it will create a new connection to our mongoose. And we don't want to have uh, like 100 connections to our database. And we want to reuse a connection if there is any uh, working connection. So uh, here actually, before we are connecting, I will check if we have any working connection. So let's do if we have mongoose connection. If we have a connection and this connection is connected, so ready state, let's see, ready state can be disconnected, connected, connecting, disconnecting, and uh, 99. So let's try with one. If it's connected, yeah, then we just want to return this one. So let's do return mongoose connection promise. All right, and this is much better. All right, so uh, now we can create a model for our user because as you may know, for our, for Mongoose, we need to create models for all collections. So uh, for users, we need to do this too. So I create new directory here. Let's call this one models. And in here we will just new file user.js with capital U because it's a model. And uh, yeah, uh, it just, uh, everyone is creating models with capital letters from the beginning. So uh, let's do const and first we need to define the schema so all fields inside our user collection. So let's do const user user schema and here we want to do new schema. Let's import this from Mongoose and uh, inside our schema we have a name that is a string and we have an email that is also a string and we get an image that is also a string and we want to add a username that will be also a string. Yeah, that's it. And uh, then what do we want to do? We want to create a model. So we do const user equals, and here the easiest way is actually do just model function. It has been imported for me and uh, not models, sorry, it should be model like this. And the name of the model will be user and the schema will be user schema. And now we just need to do export default user. And now this will work, but the safer way is to reuse existing models if there are any. So uh, here actually we first want to check that inside models, if we have a user model here. And if we don't have it, we'll create a new one. So if we have inside models, we have user model, then we are going to put it inside user and we are going to export it. If we don't, let's create this user model with user schema. Right, but now I can go back to users API and uh, let's uh, select our user. So we get an ID, as you can see here, inside this uh, query here. So let's get the ID here. This is a const ID equals and it's inside request and I think it's inside query ID. So now let's just uh, try to show the ID in the response. Let's refresh. Do we get ID? Yes, we do. But now we want to select the user. So let's do user and let's import this. Let's just do find by ID. And here we just put ID and let's put it inside the user. And we just need to add a weight here because it's a promise. And let's return our user. So now let's refresh. Yeah, we get user with email and everything. All right. So, um, so now let's go back to our index page. We are fetching the user, but we are not doing anything with it. So let's do just uh, that then. And uh, we get a response here, response. And with this response, we want to do response.json. And after we want to add then here, and uh, then we have a JSON. And um, well, maybe I can write it prettier so we'll understand everything. So uh, I put it like this with the response, we do convert it to JSON. And when it's done, we do then 
and we get the JSON that is prepared inside new uh, arrow function, we can do stuff with our JSON. We can, for example, do just console log to see if it works. Let's open console and we get our user object with a user. So uh, let's put it somewhere here. So let's do const and uh, let's put it inside state. So let's do user info and set user info equals use state from react like this. And let's put our set user info json dot user. Yeah. So uh, now we will have user information inside our user info. So if we go here where we are actually printing this test, we can actually now check if we have a username or we don't. So uh, maybe let's just so uh, but first we need to know if we are during this fetch because on the beginning the user info will be null but then it will run this fetch and then we'll have this user info so we need to know if this fetching is done so uh, let's add some kind of information here inside our state so let's add a state called user info status set user info status it will be using state and default will be false or maybe default will be also loading why not right and uh, if uh, we are still fetching so user info status is loading then we want to just return loading user info it will be just uh, some milliseconds uh, for now it's showing uh, all the time because we are not updating this but let's update after we set the user info Let's update this info status to maybe just true or loaded or ready or done. It doesn't matter as long as it's not uh, loading. Okay, so now we get test because we have our uh, user info status done and we have our user info here. So let's check if we have, uh, we actually have the user info here. So we can check if the user info has a username username and if it doesn't has a username we can just do no username yeah so we don't show the home page but instead we want to show um a username model yeah uh just there we go so uh here instead of no username we want to show a form that will ask us to pick a username so um let's create maybe a separate comp component for this and uh, it will not be inside pages because it's not a page so i will create a new directory here again called components components yeah and here i will create a new file called username form dot js and uh, here let's just do quickly export default function user name form and it will return a div with an input that will have a placeholder user name and now let's just use our component so in index.js page instead of this no username string let's do username form and we get this input here but let's style this form a little bit so uh, let's add uh, some class names to this div and uh, let's make it uh, centered so let's make flex and the half will be screen size and the items will be centered like this and uh, on the middle and also center so align sorry not align justify center for flex and let's put a new div and let's put this input here inside so um, let's also add a text let's say um, pick a username yeah like this we can make it bigger so class name text to uh, xl yeah we want everything to be centered maybe on this div let's do class name um text center yeah and now let's maybe add the button also class name here and uh, well uh, it will say continue but it should be under this uh, input let's add block on this input and uh, block on this button all right and let's make this button maybe blue so let's do background twitter blue and let's make the width to full full width yeah now let's add some uh, spacing so under the input let's do margin bottom of two didn't work that's weird let's see why okay it's it shouldn't be here block margin bottom two 
this is type we need to put it inside the class names now we get uh, some uh, spacing here same for the title maybe we can do just margin button one yeah and uh, now let's make our input and button a little prettier so for our input i will also make it uh, darker let's say background will be twitter light gray and let's add some padding on the sides to three padding on the top and the bottom will be one and let's do rounded full yeah that's better now for the button i make this a little bigger here for the button we will do almost the same so let's do rounded full and let's add some padding padding on the top and the bottom will be two that's too much let's do one yeah and that should work maybe we can do dark gray here on the input that is barely visible maybe we can use a border color here twitter border yeah this will work and uh, then instead of this being a div let's put a form and on submit when we are submitting this form we want to update our user inside database so uh, let's add a function here called handle oops handle uh, form submit yeah why not and we'll get an event and we want to prevent the default so prevent the default refreshing of the form and sending by html so on submit let's do handle form submit and uh, well in here we want to get the username so let's fix this in our button we need a state for this so let's do const and the username set user username equals use state default will be an empty string and here value will be username and on change we'll do event and um, then we'll do set username event target value yeah so now we can put text here inside and uh, well let's see mm, let's check that we will console log the username when we hit the button let's see if it works continue username is empty mm, maybe we can actually instead of being this username empty we can use the email address that we actually have so here we want to also get user info the same way we get it inside our index page so here we are getting user info and we have it inside user info but instead of copying this i will actually reuse it and i will copy this and i will create a custom hook for our react so directory let's do hooks and let's create this and let's call this one use user info.js and uh, here let's just do export default function use user info all right and uh, our hook should return a user info and uh, probably also status or user info status and uh, well let's now paste everything here and let's see so we have a uh, user info and we have user info status that we can put here mm, actually here we can rename this to just status and set status uh all right so uh this should work the only thing is that we need a use effect here that we can actually grab also from here so let's copy this let's put it here use effect but we need to import it like this and uh, this should work but here we should be status yeah now let's uh, get rid of this from our index page so i'll remove all this now we need to have a user info and user info status so let's do const and here let's do use user info and as you remember it returns user info and it returns status but now we'll have two statuses one for session and one for user info so um, i will actually rename this status back to user info status so i'll do like this colon put it to this name now we get use state is not defined i guess it's inside here use state is not defined we need to import it use state state let's import it here use state yeah but now we don't have any session information uh we have uh, session information here so let's just cut it from here from our home page and uh, let's put it here now we have uh, two statuses as well so our session status i will rename this to um 
session status Sh session status and uh, we need to put it here inside our use effect because we are using it and same for here get user info so if we don't have uh, our session loaded we will not fetch the user information and here we need to update status yeah so this works and now back to our username form and now even here we can use user info so let's do const and we'll do use user info and we get user info here and status and uh, now instead of having an empty username here we want to get an email from user info and we want to use this email here so if my email is like um, let's see it's here and david.pashko.gmail.com I will just get this first part david.pashko uh, and put it as a default so I will put it here above and uh, if the status is loading I will have hide this form if it's loading return empty string okay uh, it shouldn't be here it should be more to the bottom so I'll put it here okay and if it's loading we are showing an empty string otherwise we are showing the form so if we are showing the form it's loaded so now let's do uh default um default username um and uh, we can get it from user info because here inside we'll probably have email and i say probably because it can be still loading that's why i'm using this question mark to get email and uh, we want to split the email in two parts using the ampersand and uh, not ampersand at sign and we want to take the first part so instead of this uh, empty string here i will do default username but if we don't have an username let's do empty string so uh, this didn't work actually let's see why do we have anything inside the default username yeah we have this david.pashko so it should work so uh, but it will not work like this so let's make it uh, empty string as it was but we will actually use effect here to see when the status of the user info is loaded so let's do use effect and the dependency will be status and here an empty arrow function and if the status is loading then we will just return nothing here but then and then we will grab the then we will get the default username but only if the username is empty so if username is still an empty string then we want to get default username and we want to set it as username so let's do default username so now we have david that uh, yeah um maybe we can even get rid of the dots and other signs so let's do replace here and we let's use regular expression anything that is other than a to z a to z should be replaced to empty string let's use gi flags here and uh, we need to add a plus sign here and now if we refresh we don't get a dot here right so uh, this works now if we hit continue this function will run but actually here instead we want to send a request to our api users endpoint so let's go back to username form and uh, let's send the info there so let's say axios and uh, not axios sorry we will use fetch here fetch we will go to api users and uh, let's add some more info here the method we are going to use is actually not get and not post we will use put because we are going to put more information and we need to add headers because what we are going to send is content uh, type of application json we're going to send the json so let's do body json stringify and we want to send a username we could send it on like this but i think it's better to send it as an object with username as a proper right and this will work so uh, but now as you can see if i hit uh, continue it will send this request and it's a put request to our api users but uh, it just returns user null so as you can see inside our users api endpoint we just have uh, like get id and return user but now we need also 
define a put request and this thing was actually for our get request so let's do something maybe like this if request method is get then do this but now we want to do uh, some stuff for a put request so let's do request method put method and if we do put let's maybe just do re uh, respond response json okay now let's hit continue again now we get okay uh, maybe let's uh, now get the data we are sending a payload a json with username so let's get this username you let's get username from request body let's see if we have it let's response with the same username if i hit continue we are sending username this and we are also returning this but now we want to update our user so let's do user and there is a method uh, called find by id and update that I really like and uh, now we need an id and for this request we were sending an id but for this re request when we are updating a user we want to update only our own user so i want to get the id of a currently logged in user so how we are going to do this we can do this by using a function called the unstable get server session and it takes a request a response and uh, let's see it also needs a next auth options as you can see here so um uh, to those options are actually inside our next auth here those are those options so i will cut them from here and i will first define them as a constant here um let's call them auth options like this and i'll paste them here and i will put them here of options all right so uh, now we can we are exporting this next auth as a default but let's also uh, export not default but export just this uh, auth options auth options we can do something like this do we need the const here no because this will be defined but i think we can just do here export so we are exporting the auth options and we are using this for now our next auth so now we can our auth options here they have been imported here and uh, this should work this should return a session so let's do session equals this and we just need an await here so uh, now for our put request let's see what do we have inside session yeah if i hit continue we get session with when it expires information and the user with id and this is what we need so uh, we run find by id and update and uh, let's do session user id and now an object of the things we want to update and we want to update only the username yeah um for the response what do we want to response with let's say just with okay all right and this is a update of to our database so we need an await here as well and uh, this should work so we are getting a user id from our session and we are updating username we could actually do yeah, like username here to put username inside username but the name is the same so we can do just username all right so uh, now if i hit continue let's see it says okay let's uh, check let's refresh our database here let's go to users and let's see we have a username all right so the user is updated all right so let's go back to username form and uh, after we updated uh what do we want to do um let's do a wait here and uh, this uh, function will be async and here underneath after we send the put request what do we want to do the username is set we want to um we want to refresh our page so we will uh, reload our home page let's see where is it as you can see here we had our home page but because we don't have a username we are showing this form username for but then we want to refresh it after we change it so we'll go all the way all the way back to this test and then we know we are logged in with a username so inside our username form let's here do refresh with our router so let's get our router 
const router equals use router from next router yes it's imported and now let's do router and uh, we can do reload and uh, this should work so now let's continue and it works we are back at the home page in aside our index.js i can change this test to home page logged in and i can even show user info dot username to show the username all right so we are actually logged in and uh, i will log in here as well i just follow Elon mask all right so we have our account and uh, on the home page what do we have the first most important thing is this uh, post form that we need to add when we are logged in and we have username and everything uh, we want to have a post form so uh, here is our logged in uh, home page and on the top of the page we want to show a post form like this so uh, let's create a form like this and uh, well above the form we also have a home as a text so let's do h1 with a class name of text excel and it will say home and uh, let's make it bold so it will be text bold or maybe it is font bold yeah it's font bold let's see yeah we have home maybe instead of xr let's do lg so large we have home right but the first thing i want to do is to make it center so let's add those borders on the side and let's make the content centered so for this diff the parent let's add some class names and uh, here let's maybe do width of uh, let's do maybe half of the screen maybe not let's do max width instead so it's the max width and let's do xl and now let's make it centered so margins on the sides auto nothing has changed yes it actually did but let's change this to just large yeah mm, maybe i will make it like this uh -huh. 125 percent all right so we have our home and let's also add those borders so border left and border right and the border color should be twitter border twitter border so we have small borders here that are barely visible but uh, now let's add the half of this main div to be at least uh, screen size so let's do min half of uh, full screen so now we have those borders here on the left and on the right and uh, let's see now for our home let's maybe add some padding as well so padding let's say four yeah this will work now we can continue with our form so now to create this form let's see the first thing we are going to need is actually the avatar of the or the image for the user and this is something we actually get from the user because when we logged in with google we get this uh, url here with to our uh, avatar so uh, let's maybe create a div and uh, because we are going to need to split this form in two parts uh, the, the left and the right part so uh, i'll create a div with class name let's say flex here so we'll split it in two parts and then inside the first div will be with this avatar so let's do emg and the source will be actually user info and i think it was uh, what was the name of it once again it was image yeah it's image here so let's do image and the uh, avatar as a alternative text so we have the image here but now we also need to add some make it rounded so on the div above let's do rounded full and overflow hidden and uh, we want to make it smaller so let's do hmm, let's do maybe width of 12 yeah i think that will work and uh, now on this uh, now on this div let's uh, or maybe even on this form let's put some class names so we can add some margin on the sides of uh, five yeah and uh, now we can uh, put a text area on the other side so here we want to have a text area so we can write some text so here let's do another div with text area and we don't need the name id or column or rows and we can do just like this so we have text area let's add some class names so let's make it with full and uh, well it 
didn't take the full width because on this div we need to add the grow for the flex. So let's do grow. Yeah. And um, now we actually need to add some spacing here in between. So maybe let's just do padding left of, um, let's say two, maybe more. Let's do four. Yeah, that will work. And uh, now let's maybe make this uh, text area bigger. Or maybe we can, uh, maybe we can first add some placeholder here inside. So uh, let's add the placeholder and uh, let's see what's happening. What's happening like this. And now we also need to add some uh, padding. Let's say two. Yeah, that uh, looks nice. Something weird happened with the avatar. As you can see, it has been, uh, it has grown. The avatar div has grown because we have flex and this area, this text area become bigger. So um, actually I will get rid of all those uh, classes from here and I will put a new div with those classes and I will put it here like this. Now it's rounded again. All right, but uh, for our text area, uh, we want to make it uh, black, I guess. Yeah, so uh, let's do background transparent and text Twitter, Twitter white. What's happening? And um, this will work. Maybe then we don't need this padding left. Is that big? Only a small one, padding left too. Yeah, that will work. Well, underneath the most important part for now is this tweet button. So under the text area, let's add the button with some class names. And the button will say tweet. And the classes will be background of Twitter blue, text white. And let's add some padding on the sides of four and top and the bottom two and rounded full. Yeah, that will work. Maybe on the sides, let's do five. Yeah. And uh, we want to have this button on the right side. Maybe we can decrease from top and the bottom padding. And now the button should be on the right side. So I'll put it inside the div with class name of uh, text right. And I will put this button inside and it's on the right side now. And uh, maybe we can add this uh, little border here above the button. So it will look uh, more like Twitter. So let's do border top, border Twitter border color. Yeah. And now some padding top of one. Yeah. And now we have the padding. So uh, yeah, I think this will work. Maybe a little bigger padding, padding top of two. Yeah, this this will work. We'll fix the upload of images and stuff later. Right now, let's fix so we can uh, send something here. And let's do test. And if we hit the tweet, nothing will happen. But for now, as you can see, we are building this home page. But uh, only this form became this big. So I think I will just cut it from here and I will put it into a separate component inside components. I will create a new file called uh, uh, postform.js. And here let's do export default and uh, post form. And uh, I forgot function and here return and all this. Now we can put it here. So uh, post form like this. User info is not defined. Okay, so inside our post form, we were using user info that we don't have. So uh, let's get it. So const user info from use user info. Yes. And uh, we want to have a grab also status. And if status equals loading, then we want to just return empty string. Uh, so it doesn't try to render this with avatar and stuff, this whole form, if you are not logged in and we don't have the user information. Right, um, but now let's uh, maybe fix this button so we can post stuff. So uh, on the form, maybe let's add on submit and let's create for, let's create a function for this. So let's call this function on post submit and it will take an event that will run uh, prevent fault and we will use it here on post submit. Maybe we should uh, actually rename it to um, handle post submit. So we'll have the same naming convention. Uh, yeah, this will work. But now for this text area, we need to have a state. So let's do const and uh, post or maybe just a text. Text, set text, use state. Default will be an empty string. And uh, let's see, text area, we have it here. Let's do value equals text and, uh, and uh, on change. On change, we'll get an event. 
and we want to run set text and we want to set it to event target value like this so now if we hit the button i can do console log and the text that we have inside text area let's see let's do a test to it and we get the text test right so we uh, we want to post it to an API so we can create a post. So uh, let's do fetch and uh, it will go to slash API slash posts. Let's say because we have users, then let's create posts as well. And then the method will be post. And then we need to send headers that will be um, content type. Sorry, like this content type uh, application JSON. But you know, an easier way to do this instead of using fetch we can use axios so i will do yarn add axios and it will be much easier to write requests for us so instead of doing this fetch let's do axios post and the url will be api slash posts and now just the data here will just send thanks as the text so we can do just text like this and uh, we can do uh, we will get json response directly from this post method but we need to add wait so there is no need for um response to json and another promise and uh, that we get from fetch but if you use axios it's a little simpler so uh, we have a wait here so we need to make this function async and now we have json with the response and um, well do we need to do anything with this response after we post a tech uh, a tweet we don't need to do anything with the response we just want to show this uh, refresher page or something so we'll just get rid of this for now and uh, let's create this endpoint so um, inside api let's create a new file and uh, we have users now we need posts.js and uh, well here as always export default async function called the handler it doesn't need to be handler but this is what they use and i will use it as well and now the first thing we need to do is to init mongoose so to make sure we have a connection to our database and then we need to create a new post for this we will need a new model because we have only model for user so let's create a new model here let's call this one post.js and uh, here us uh, same for the user same with it for the user so uh, const post schema equals a new schema and um, now we need to define our schema so inside the post we will have a text that will be a string and we need a user id to know who posted this so let's call this one author and the author will be actually that's in the inside mongoose we have uh, types and it will be object id of our user so i will do like this because we will put more information here the type of this will be uh, object id because will be it will be id of our user but we will also add a reference to a user and uh, when we populate this later we can get the author easier right but now let's uh, create a post model so post equals we can do export const post export default const uh just const post equals and uh, same here models if we have this uh, model post otherwise uh, we create a new model name will be post and then how it will have this post schema yeah and we just need to export default post like this and now let's go back to our posts api endpoint and here we can check first that request method sorry method is a post request and if it's a post request we want to create a post so as you remember we are sending this uh, text inside payload uh, inside the body so um, we can do const text and uh, from request body and uh, then we get the text and we want to create a new post so let's do post let's import this and here let's try to yeah create and here we just put the data 
and needs to be a weight here because it's a thing post crate and we need to put the author that will be id of our user and uh, the text but instead of this one we need to get id of our user and we can get this from our session so let's do const session equals and remember we need to use this unstable get server session request reason response and the third was uh, auth options imported yes and it should have this await here as well right so the author will be actually session user id and we'll have the text here and now we just need to do some response with uh, yeah let's do it with json let's just say okay but instead of saying okay we could actually return this post so the const post equals this newly created post and we can just do post like this now uh let's clear this console and let's go to network let's do test one and let's try to tweet it post yeah i think it worked now let's try with uh let's test with our database let's do refresh and we have posts here and as you can see here we have one post with test uh, one as a text and author is this id so um now let's say we want to display all the posts here underneath on the home page so we go to our index.js and uh, well under the post form we want to uh, let's put the div here no class names for now but here underneath we want to show all posts yeah so uh, well uh, we need to fetch them here on the home page so uh, let's use effect for this so we use effect and uh, here an empty arrow function and uh, no dependencies and this will run when we open the home page so what, what do we want to do we want to axios request get request to our api slash posts yeah just like this and let's grab those so posts equals this and await and uh, this is get request the previous one was post request so well, let's go to our posts api endpoint and here we can actually check if request method equals and get then let's just response json all possible posts so uh, posts and then here we'll just do find and exec execute um that should uh, work but now as you can see we get some errors and uh, well let's try first by getting this from here and let's create a separate function function fetch posts maybe fetch home posts and then we do this maybe we don't need this away for now and uh, well here inside let's do just call this function fetch posts fetch home posts like this and we are fetching posts now response but it's empty all right um yeah i think i forgot to put a wait here yeah so if i add a wait and refresh we get posts and as you can see we get this uh, json here with one post so now in inside our index page we can put those posts inside the state so the posts set posts equals use state default will be an empty array and um, instead of this let's do then and uh, then we'll get all the posts and we will do set posts with um like this okay and uh, now instead of all posts let's uh, maybe get posts uh, length didn't show anything let's see why what's the problem here okay it, uh, it's not actually like this it should be a response here and here should be response um, data yeah so now inside posts we have uh, posts and the length so the size of it is one so here inside we can check if it's bigger than zero then we will do posts map and for each post we want to put a div with some class names probably and inside let's just put post text yeah and we have this one as we posted before but we want to make it prettier so uh, first let's add the border above the post so for each post here let's add border top and border uh, twitter border color yeah now for this tweet uh, form we want to add some padding bottom under the button so we have some padding top here but let's add padding bottom of two as well yeah that's much better now inside this post uh let's add the padding of at least five so i have this test one here 
And let's test to put uh, test two to it. Now nothing have a refresh, but if I refresh the page, I have test one here and test two here. Now the first thing is that test two should be on the top. So on our API endpoint posts, uh, let's see here we are sending all the posts, but uh, I want to actually sort this. So I will do sort and um, here I can do the column name. And now the problem is we don't have any column and uh, that we can sort by because we don't have any timestamps there and uh, we don't know when a post has been created. So I will go to post model and inside our post post schema as a second param. So uh, not inside all the fields. I will add options here and I'll put timestamps to true. Now uh, if I create a new test to test free to it and see we get ID. Let's see here in the database. If I do refresh, let's go to posts and uh, I don't see any timestamps. Maybe we need to restart our app first. So I will restart and I will do post four as well. Tweet. Let's do again test five. Tweet. And let's see. Yeah, now we get this created ad and updated ad timestamps. Good. Um, right. Uh, so now we can actually sort by created ad. So let's go to our endpoint. Sort created ad, created ad, and here minus one. So it will be the flipped uh, descending. So now if I refresh, you can see five, four, one, two. Those don't have any timestamps. That's why they get out of the order. But we have five, four, five, four. So it's okay. And if I add another one, test uh, six and tweet, we'll see if I refresh, it gets uh, here on the top. So uh, there are a few things that I want to fix on our index page first. When I when I hit tweet, I want this field to be cleared. So inside post form, after we send uh, we posted this post, I want to reset this text. So let's set text to empty string. Yeah. And another thing is I would like to refresh it uh, automatically. So no uh, uh, control R for refreshing, but instead the posts should reload. So uh, to do this, the post form, so this area will take, uh, will take a property called uh, on post. Yeah, and this will be called here. If we have uh, on post, if on post, then we will just call it on post, like a function, like a callback here. Now inside our index page, we can add on post, and then we can put like arrow function here and tell what should be done after we posted a post or a tweet, however you want to call it. We want to fetch home posts again. So let's do like this, fetch home posts like this. Yeah, and just refresh. And uh, now let's do test seven. And if I tweet, well, I forgot about S, but you see it works. It get here. All right, so uh, this works. But uh, as you can see, the problem is those tweets don't look like they should. So uh, we need to fix the styling. We need to show the this uh, avatar, the name, when it has been posted and the username here. And then we have those buttons with how many comments and retweets and hearts and the share button. So, uh, well, I think that to save some space on the index page, we will create a new component for this. Uh, so inside our components, I will create a new file called uh, postcontent.js. And here I'll do just export default post content. And um, oh, I forgot about function here and it will return a post content, but I need to grab and uh, let's see this div, or well, maybe not this div, but only let's say it would just return a div with a text. So uh, it will have all their properties that a post has. So text, text here. And now instead of doing this, we will put post content like this. And we need to pass the text that will come from post text. Yeah, so now it still works. But now uh, let's see, we need to get the avatar. So as you can see, we are sending this uh, all the posts, but we are sending the author as an ID of the author and no information. So um, 
let's go to our posts endpoint and let's see uh, we are sending all of this so i will cut it from here and then i'll put it inside the variable so let's do const post equals this and now i will put it uh, like this so we'll have more space we are sorting those but we want also to grab the author information so here i will do populate and i want to populate the author and now if i hit refresh here let's see we have posts and we have author as an object and as you can see here we have my email my username my name and the image of my avatar or my photo so uh, now uh, we can use it and uh, here we are sending only the text of the post but we need actually to send all the information about the post so uh, i will do something like this post with three dots here and this means that it will send all the properties of the post to the post content so we still get this text but we also get the information like author and other stuff so here let's do comma and let's do author and uh, yeah we need to put more information here so um first this div should be flex so we can have some columns because as you can see here on the left side we should have a we should have a avatar and then on the right side we should have the name the username the timestamp and the text and the buttons so flex here and uh, then we we'll have uh, two divs the first will have the author avatar and then on the second one we will have this uh, text so let's do avatar here let's see yeah avatar here and then we have the text we actually uh, used avatar here on the home page let's see index uh we did it inside username form uh not username form sorry we did it inside post form it's here post form we have this uh avatar div here so i think we can even this put uh, into components as a new component called avatar.js um, and here as always we can do export default function avatar and he will just return the div with the image so we need only source as a property oops mm, so here instead of user info image we will do source and let's go back to post form instead of this div let's reuse our uh, avatar and we need source and our source was user info and i think it was a uh, photo image yeah image yeah so our form still works but now for our post uh, content so for all those posts instead of avatar here let's use avatar component and we need source and the source of the avatar will come from the author and uh, here that image yeah uh right um this works now for the content we need some padding on the left so let's do padding left too so we have some pacing here now let's see and the next thing is the username and not username the very the first thing is the name and then we have username and then we have this timing so um here we have text but here above we need to put let's put another div and uh, even for the text we can have another div oops like this and let's put this text here inside and inside the first div let's put the name so author name and uh, then we also need author uh, username and then we need this to have this uh, timing i'm oh, sorry should be username and then timing so uh, it's actually created at created at that we want to show created at and uh, now let's see it looks really bad so um first we need to make this uh, we need to add some spacing so uh, on all those let's put those inside the, the spans and uh, on the second and third let's add the class name and let's add padding left of one now let's see yeah and now the username should be grayish same with the uh, same with the time here so uh, let's do a uh, text and uh, we have this twitter light gray same here text twitter light gray let's see yeah that's a little better and uh, now uh, you can see the time is really weird well it's it's readable but we want something like this 22 hours ago and uh, we can actually i will just 
copy in this tab we can actually get this from uh, from a separate package and it's called uh, time ago i think it has also a react version so uh, yeah time ago react and uh, the where is it how we are going to use it just uh, npm install time re time ago react so inside our terminal uh, I will actually still use yarn add time ago react and uh, let's see how we're going to use it. We need to import it. So let's go to our, let's see, we need to register a language and then we can do time ago. So let's go to our app.js and uh, let's put it here. Let's copy this and let's put it here. And now we can uh, import a language. But I think we'll just for this one English. And now let's see. Mm, let's go back to the React version. And uh, let's see here. We need to register this. So let's put it here. Register English to be English. Can we set the default? Um, we can do format. Let's see what kind of formats can we use. Uh, time ago. Date time string. No, this is not format. I think we need to go to the yeah here and uh, let's see what kind of formats do we have here. Mm. Search for format. Let's go to the website here. I will actually get rid of this one and I will whoops and I will install another one. This one looks weird. Let's uh, search again for React time ago. I think there is a better one. React time ago. Let's search for JavaScript time ago. Yeah, this is the type of time ago we want. Just now, 45 seconds ago. This is the same thing they are using on Twitter. So there's also a React version, but the previous one we want to remove. So yarn remove time ago React. And instead, we want to add React time ago. It's not time ago React, but this time we want to actually install React time ago. And uh, to use it, we need to go to app.js and uh, let's see, we need to put all of this, but we need, we don't need the Russian. We just need English as a default uh, local. Yeah, we get English and uh, we also need this part, JavaScript time ago. So uh, let's do yarn add JavaScript time ago. So we will have it as well. Now it's installed and uh, now let's check the React time ago. Let's check how to use it. Mm, React time ago and the date and that's all. So uh, post content instead of this created at we will do React time ago and the date will be created at. Okay, uh, it says that invalid invalid number argument not a number so this is because some of those values are null because our first posts don't have any created at so let's check if we have a created at and only then we will show this information and uh, let's see now we have some problems with uh, get user info inside uh, our hooks inside our hook that's weird i just try to reload uh, it works. So as you can see, we have this 17 minutes ago and uh, it works, but we want to have like a shorter version and they have it like, uh, let's see, we have tooltip future, let's say uh, format. And they have round, round minute and Twitter version and uh, Twitter first minute. I don't know what, what's the difference, but uh, we can actually use this Twitter version format Twitter. And uh, let's see if I save and refresh still 18 minutes. Let's see why it should be time style, I think. Yeah, now if I, yeah, 18 minutes. Uh, so that works. That looks uh, now much better. So, uh, so now we are showing the posts or some basic information at least. Now let's add maybe this uh, add sign here for our username. So here let's add add sign on the beginning. Yes. And uh, now the name should be bold. So uh, here let's do class name font bold. Yeah. So uh, this will work for now. The next thing I think is that when you click on the post or uh, or on the content of the post and uh, we should go to this specific post to the post 
page. So I'll fix it here as well. Here we have a text inside div. So this is the, our text and we want to change it. So it will be a link same way. It's uh, here. For example, I can, you can see a hand and I can click on this post. So instead of doing link this div, I will do link here. And as you can see now, the link has been imported from uh, next link. So uh, here I will add href and the href will go uh, to see the, the URL should be like the username and slash status and then the ID. So here I will do backticks and here slash username. So uh, author username slash status and then uh, ID. So uh, we need to get ID from here. It will be underscore IDs the same way it's in the database and underscore ID. And now if I save, let's see now, as you can see, if I click this one, it goes to this page of it particles slash status slash and the ID and you get four four because uh, we don't have this kind of page. So uh, let's create this. So uh, we have here pages and uh, we need to create the page for this uh, status here. So first we have a username that will change. So uh, we need to create a directory it will be brackets here and just username. And then inside we'll have a, another directory called status because this will not change. That's why we don't have any brackets here. Then inside we'll have an ID, the last para, and the ID will change, will be changed uh, as well. So we'll do brackets ID.js. And now here we can do function uh, export default function, and we can call this function uh, post page and uh, it will return hello. Why not? And now if we refresh, we get a hello. So this works. But now instead of hello, we first need to grab this uh, post ID. So first let's maybe, so um, first let's maybe grab the ID. So uh, we need to get the router. So let's do use router from next router. And then we want to have an ID from the params. So I um, think we'll get it from router, uh, maybe from query. Yeah. Let's try to do a console log of the ID to see if we have it. Yeah, we get the ID. Uh, so now instead of returning hello, let's put the ID. Yeah, it works. So now we can actually fetch this post. I think by this ID and we can show, we can make it prettier. So it looks like this. So, um, first we need to fetch information about our post and we need to put it inside a state. So let's do const post set post and use state from react. Yes. And, um, we need to use effect here. And the first will be here, arrow function, no dependencies. So when we open this page, we want to do an API call. So let's do Axio, Axios and it will be get and it will go to slash API slash posts. And let's say it will do ID equals and then ID of our post so it's the plus ID. Let's say that dependency will be actually the ID. So if it changes, then we will uh, call and uh, fetch a new post. But here we can change, check also if we don't have an ID, we will just do a return, nothing here. But after we get a post, we want to get response here. And with the response, what do we want to do? We want to uh, do set post and response data. It doesn't work. As you can see, we get 404 um, because uh, we need to define it. Should we post? It should be posts, let's say. So we can use the same page as we, same file that we used before, who have posts. And uh, as you can see, we have actually get here, but this get is for all possible posts. So now here we need to actually check if we have an ID inside the, our request and it's inside um, request query, I believe. So let's do a console. Let's do here. If we have ID, then we want to do this. Otherwise, or else we want to uh, send all posts. But if we have ID, we want to do response JSON with the ID. So now let's check it. Posts. What do we get? Yeah, we get the ID as a 
response. Okay, so this works. So now here, let's uh, grab this uh, post by this ID. So uh, as the const post equals await post find by ID and ID here. And here we can do a post. Yeah, so we get the post. And we get author and stuff. And uh, maybe we can even do a plate and get the author. Let's refresh, post, and we get even the author. That's good. Let's go back to our uh, post page. So now we have our information inside post. So now we can actually display it. So here, instead of ID, we can do a post content. The same thing we use on side, uh, inside our homepage. We can use this uh, component post content. Uh, but first we actually need to check if we have the post information. So if post and uh, then we can do post content and here inside we will just put all the post properties. So uh, now this didn't work. Uh, let's see why. We don't get outer image. Let's see. Inside our we get the image. Something is uh, looks like something went wrong. Let's refresh. Still the same problem. But I think that inside our avatar or inside our post content. So let's go to post content. Let's say uh, here we have avatar. But let's say we will show it only if we have author. Um, yeah, like this. If we have author and uh, and we have image inside author, then we will show the avatar. So now everything is empty. Let's see. And the author name is even missing. Hmm, something is wrong here. Let's see. I will refresh and uh, let's see. We get session posts, post author. Hmm, let's see. If we have post, let's do like this. Let's refresh. If we have post, let's check if we have post ID. Yeah, now nothing is uh, visible. And I know why. And the problem is actually that the response that we get inside response data is an object. And this object has post as a property. So here we just need to do that post. Now it works. All right. Uh, and this is because we were sending this uh, as an object. If I go to posts here, you can see if you do like this, you are sending an object with a post. And if you send like this, you are sending just this one value. But let's go back to our post page and uh, let's see. We get something like this. We should get something like this. So uh, first, let's put maybe everything inside the div. So we'll have some more styling and more elements here inside. So uh, the first thing we miss is this layout. On the left and on the right side, we have these borders and everything should be centered. The same way we have it on our index page and we have those classes here. So instead of copying those to the post page, I will create a, I will create a component so we can reuse this layout. So inside components, I will create a new file called layout.js and here export default function layout. And then here, let's just do return and uh, like this. And here inside, we need to put all the children, children. So now on our uh, index page, we can do layout here. And here we should close the layout page like this. Yeah. And now we can reuse the same for our post page. So let's see on our post page here. Um, instead of doing this div here, let's do layout. Yeah, so we have layout, but uh, we will also get here some padding. So all this, or maybe not like this, but uh, for this div, let's do class names and let's add padding of five. So we get some padding here. And now we get this uh, tweet and arrow back. The first thing above the post. So above the post content, uh, let's put this as a link maybe. So we have a link and it says tweet and the arrow left. It has arrow left and it says tweet. Okay. And I guess it goes to the home page. It does. So uh, this link will be ref to the home page, right? Uh, we need uh, arrow back, arrow left. So I will get this from hero icons. Let's search for left. And this one will work, copy JSX. And here inside the, the link, we will put this SVG. Let's see. Okay, link 
can't have multiple elements so i will put the div and both svg and the text will go inside this div yeah it works and um, but this div will be flex yeah and uh, this works but the padding from the top shouldn't be that big so uh, we have padding on the sides let's do a five but padding on the top and the bottom is the two this will work now um we need some uh, spacing from the from this um, icon so let's do padding right of two maybe margin right of two yeah and uh, maybe more three yeah and for the whole link let's do margin bottom of two so we get some spacing let's see how much space do we need we need much more space let's do five yeah this should work and uh, well it uh, works when i click it but i need also cursor to be pointer pointer like this so i get this hand icon send hand cursor it works mm, yeah so uh, now let's see um one thing is that uh, this post looks different than the replies or home posts because here as you can see the avatar is on the left and then on the right side we have the rest but here when we open a post the avatar is on the left text is underneath it's not on the right side here as it is here so uh, let's see our post content we need to have two versions of our post content the one version will be like a small version another one will be a big version so uh, when we open a post it should be a big version so uh, how we can do this we can take another param inside the our post content and it will be big that will be default as false but on our post page post page we will put this big to be true or we can just skip it but it'll just big and uh, so inside this we can know that uh, if it's big then say yes if it's not big then say no so this should be big but all those should be not big right so let's see what are the differences in the layout here we have avatar on the left side and then everything on the right side but here well um we get avatar on the left side then we have some uh, the name and the username here we don't put here the timing the time goes underneath and then the content is here right so first i think i will put another div here and this flex will go inside this doesn't change anything but now i can do something like this uh, our text here will be shown only if it's not big layout so here we have this link let's put it inside a separate div mm, and this will be shown only for not big if it's not big then show this text now it's not visible because this is big layout inside the big layout the text should be underneath so uh, here where we are closing the flex div underneath we can check if big then let's do uh, the same thing let's we can copy here so now we have text here underneath uh, for big layout but for small layout we get text uh, next to the uh, next to the avatar right but uh, Another thing is that for a big layout, we want to put this underneath, same as uh, it's here. So let's see, here we are showing the name, here we are showing the username, and we need to break line here. If it's uh, big, then we just need to put BR here. BR, yeah, so now it's, uh, now it's better. Uh, it has this padding left here. That's why we have this spacing. But I think we can just get rid of this padding left and we can add padding right here instead. Yeah. Um, if we go back, this looks nice. And if we open, this looks nice as well. Now the time here should be only for the small layout. So, so here we have, if we have created at, then we show the time. But if we have created at and it's not big layout. So now it, the time has disappeared. But for small layouts, we still have it here. So uh, here we have this uh, content for big layouts. Let's add some class names and the margin top of two maybe. Yeah. And then here under the, for big layouts, under the content, the text, we want to actually show the time 
timestamp here. So uh, here, let's maybe put another div and um, let's put this React time ago. And uh, let's see what styles uh, can we have here. Let's see, style, we have steps here. Hmm, rounding. Um, let's see the documentation, how we can style it. Let's do React time ago, or we can search actually for JavaScript time ago. JavaScript time ago. So we have something like, like this, but uh, those are examples and nothing looks like uh, the thing we actually need. So I think we cannot use this one. But instead, we need to format this ourselves with default uh, new date and uh, here our created at. And then we can do format here to date string. And let's see how, uh, how this looks like. Yeah, we get something like this. So I think actually we'll create a new date above here before the return. So let's do const uh, created at date equals this. And uh, now let's not complicate this. We will format this using another library. But first we need to check that we have a created at here. If created at, then we can show this div and maybe we can do just to local date string. Now let's see how it looks like. Not bad to ISO string. Well, this, uh, this, this looks nice, but let's replace T with a space. Mm, not repeat, uh, replace T with a space. So we have space here and we want to get rid of this. Let me format this a little better. I want to get rid of this uh, ending here. So I will split I will get, I want to get rid of this part. It's three, six, eight. So let's do slice from zero to minus eight. And I want to get the first part. This didn't work. Let's do instead the 20, 30. Start from zero and at uh, 30. Okay, uh, it's not an array. And 20, almost 19. We can do 17, 16. And we get the thing we want. Um, but um, that should work. But actually, I think it would be nice to have uh, to put it uh, as they have it. So time first and then the date. So now let's do split off by space. And then let's do reverse. And then let's do join by space. So now we have time first. And um, I think that, that that will work. Now let's just make it uh, grayish and smaller. So let's do text, Twitter light gray and do text small. Yeah, this will work. All right, so uh, the next thing I forgot about for post content is actually the comments, retweets, hearts and the share buttons. Uh, so uh, I think I will put it as a separate component because this will be a lot of HTML. So new file, post buttons.js and here export default function post buttons and return. It will return a div and it will say uh, buttons here just for now. And uh, inside post content, we will have two places where we want to put it. For small posts like this, we want to put it under the text, but we have text in two places. For small posts, we have it on the right side of the post, but on big posts, we have it from the left to the right under the avatar. So here we have the first post. So under this link, we will put post buttons like this. And uh, we will also put it for our big post. So it will be under the time here. So let's put post buttons here. So buttons here. And if we go back to the homepage buttons here, yeah, this will work. But now we need to put those buttons instead. So let's go to our buttons and uh, we need to get icons for reply, retweet and hearts. So, um, and uh, this share. So um, let's create four divs because we'll have four buttons. And inside each div we'll have an icon and the number, maybe except this one. But uh, let's try to put something. So uh, we need icons for comment, retweet, heart and share. Let's go to hero icons. 
and let's see first for the comment let's see let's find something similar something really simple i think this one will work so we have this one and let's place a span with a zero the second icon button was retweet let's try with reply arrows and um, we can take this one or maybe let's search yeah this one will work so the second will be this and also pan with zero inside for now the third was hard so let's do hard yeah and uh, a span with a zero inside and the last one was a uh, sure so let's do sure yeah this one will work it doesn't need to be identical and the last one doesn't have any numbers so let's see almost there uh, our main div will have a class name of flex so now we have it in uh, rows here um let's see the sizing of the icons is uh, kind of okay but now for each div that uh, contains um icon svg and the span we need to add class names so all of those will be flex yeah and uh, for this main flex we need to put uh, space uh, around uh content justify around yeah so it's uh, so we have space in between those and now let's see so this uh is this div with the icons instead of around let's do between justify between yeah this is better but it should go all the way to the even this should be bigger even this should be bigger um uh, even this should be bigger let's go to post content and uh, this should be with full uh, and let's add grow on this part so the right part will be this big yeah that's better now back to pause buttons and um, let's see those buttons shouldn't go all the way to the right side but it should have some spacing from the right side and i want to do this as well so uh, i will do uh, maybe max width of uh, large or medium no let's maybe do then margin right of five it's nothing let's do 12 that's better i think this will work right now the colors of those icons are wrong and the sizing uh, should be much smaller so uh, let's see as you can see every icons has this uh, those class names width and half so uh, i will select for all and i will do wave five and have five that's better and now for the now actually i want this uh i want those to be buttons not divs so we have this div class name flex for each and i will change this to be a button so now those are buttons uh let's see and uh, now we have some we need some spacing between the icon so uh, we have this wave and hey for each icon but we also need padding right of let's say two no uh let's do margin right of two maybe one yeah one will be enough um i want also to change the color to twitter gray so let's try with text twitter light gray yeah it worked and maybe we can text make the text smaller text as small yeah and maybe we can add some margin top of one yeah that looks really nice i think it looks better than they have it um all right and the icons are prettier mm. so uh, we need to fill those digits and uh, how we can do this we need to have a count for likes retweets retweets and uh, comments but we don't have it yet because we haven't implemented any liking and replying but i think maybe we can start with uh, fixing this uh, like button or heart icon so for this button with the it's the third one one two three we want to do on click uh, uh we want to call a like function that we are going to define here function like all right and uh, when uh, when we like something we want to increase this number and uh, this number is hard coded for now but we can get it from the properties that we are going to send so let's say we will send to post buttons a property called likes count yes and uh, 
the default will be zero. So we'll put it here like count. Now we want to increase it. So we need to have state for this. So I will put state here, but we can't use the same name. So um, I will rename this likes count to something else. I will rename here to likes count default. And here I can use likes count and set likes count and it will be use state and default will be likes count default. So when we will send property or value to this post buttons, we are going to send likes count, but here it will be renamed to likes count default. So we can use it as a default for our state and we can also update our state. So let's say that when you click the like, we'll go, we'll go and do set likes count. We'll get the previous value and we'll do previous that one. Now let's see. Yeah, that works. Uh, so that is really cool. And the next thing is actually that when you like something here, uh, you know, it's red. Mm. So uh, we are sending likes count, but actually I need to also know here if I liked this. So let's put it inside the state const. Let's call this one like by me and set like by me equals use state and default will be false. But we actually need also default from the from the property here. So maybe let's first try to save it inside our database. So when we click a like, let's get rid of this counting to the unlimited number. And uh, when we like something, we want to send a uh, Axios request. And uh, let's say it will be a get request or maybe a post request. Yeah, it's better with post. Uh, anyway, we need to know if it's liked by me or not. Yeah, I'll put it here liked by me and the default will be false. But then I can know if I should uh, make it red or not. So if it's liked by me, it should be red and uh, colored. So here we have our likes count. And uh, here I can make something like this. And uh, I will check if it's liked by me. Uh, but I will put it inside a parenthesis. Liked by me. If it is, I want to be text red 500, for example otherwise nothing and now if i just testing change it to true well nothing have changed i need to add the space here yeah and this works and uh, but i also want to add the feel uh feel red 500 and um, let's see a uh, stroke current color maybe i can do like this stroke no it should be feel uh, let's say that here on the class name, we will do fill inherit. Yeah, so now it's uh, red. And uh, we would also need this. Uh, no, this will work. But now we'll change it to false as a default. And now let's fix that we can actually click and like a post. So we need to send a post to API slash uh, we can set it to posts and handle it there, or we can maybe create a new endpoint like like. And I think it'd be better like this. So it will have more files, but less code in each file. And uh, what data do we want to send? We want to send the ID of this post, the ID of this post. So we need ID post ID here, and we'll send ID that will be post ID. Maybe we can do just ID like this. And uh, I think that's all. Let's do here a wait and let's make it async. And uh, let's get response. Response equals this. And let's rename this like to toggle like because it will be both for liking and unliking. So uh, here on click toggle like. And uh, on the response, I want to know if it's already liked. So uh, let's say that if response data already, or if it's liked, if it's liked, then I want to make it red. Otherwise it should be uh, not liked by me. Um, so let's say it will be is 
liked here is liked. If it's liked right now, then I want to make the likes count, uh, set likes count to previous, previous plus one. If it's not liked anymore, then I want to set likes count previous, previous minus one. Yeah. And I want also to toggle the colors and I need to use like by me, but actually I can put it inside the state. So liked by me and set liked by me and the default will be mm, liked by me default. So I can use it here. Now the last part is we need to fix this like endpoint. So uh, inside API, let's create a new file called like.js and here as always export default function handle or handler or anything else and we get request and response and the first thing as always we need to init mongoose so we'll get our database connection and we need to make it async here and uh, when we get a like request first thing is that we want to know if it's already like and to know this we need to find any existing like for this specific post so to get uh, first we need to get the id of the post so let's do const id equals and as i remember we send it as a data here so uh, we can get it from we can get it from request body like this and uh, let's try with responsing id to know if it works now if I go to network and I hit this hard, preview is empty, response is empty. And uh, let's see payload, payload is empty as well. Okay, that's why the ID, we are not sending an ID. Let's see, the ID is empty here. So here where we are using this post buttons, we need to pass the ID like this. And the uh, same thing here for post buttons for the large size of the post. Now, if I hit the heart, as you can see, we get this uh, ID of the post. Mm. Let's refresh so we'll get rid of this minus three. And uh, here, let's go back to our like endpoint. Right, so uh, here we want to know if the if the post with this id is liked by the current user so uh, let's also get the current user const session equals await unstable get server uh, session let's import this and let's import of options yes and uh, let's get user id uh, I const user id equals session user id yeah now we need to check if this uh, post id Maybe we can do ID and this will be post ID. Now we want to check if this post ID is liked by this user ID. So uh, how do we check it inside our database? We don't have any collection for our likes, but uh, we can create it. Let's create a new model for our likes and it will be called likes.js and here const like, sorry, not likes. It should be like singular like. And uh, no, uh, like schema equals new schema. And uh, what information we need for a specific like? Let's add timestamps, timestamps true, just so we have it. And uh, we need to know the user ID and the post ID. So um, we can call this one author of the like. Author of the like, yeah, uh, why not? Author of the like will be an object ID. So let's do uh, type will be mongoose, oops, uh, types object ID and the reference will be user. And now uh, we need also post and the post will be type um, object ID and the reference will be post. And uh, this should work. Now we need to define our like model. So like model equals mm, models uh, like if we have it. Otherwise we do new model with a name of uh, like and like schema. And we export default like and uh, this should work. So now let's go back to our like API endpoint and let's see. We have user ID, we have post ID. We just need to find an existing like if there's any. So let's do const existing like equals await. And now like import our model. 
like find one find one and here our filters and the filters will be that the author should be user id and the post should be post id and now if we have existing like uh, we want to remove it so let's do await existing like remove but if we don't have an existing like we want to create a like so let's do like create and here await and the data we want to put what is the data we want to put uh the data we want to put is actually the same data we want we searched here so we can copy and put it here and this should work now for the response as you remember for here inside buttons we get response and we check if it's liked maybe we can check a like object and we can send it if we liked so uh if we liked so we here we added a like let's create this like object and let's do response json with this object here as a, as a uh, property of an object but if we remove a uh, like let's do just res response to json with okay or no that should work now let's see if i click this hard it increased to one and the uh, preview we get this like object so that's cool inside post buttons um inside the post buttons um it has increased this uh, likes count but another thing we forgot about is to set this liked by me to true but if we remove the like it should be set liked by me to false yes now the only problem is that when i refresh this will disappear it will be zero because we are not sending uh, likes count and liked by me but we can fix it so uh, this post buttons is in two places inside our post content so inside the post content we need to know if we have uh, we need to grab all the likes we need to grab the likes count and if it's liked by the current user all right so uh, let's see where we are using this post content the first is the index page so this page that we are seeing now we are sending all post information that we get from this posts endpoint right so um, let's see how this endpoint looks like it's here and for this get request for we're sending all the posts populated author but we are not sending anything about uh, likes and likes count or something like this so uh, I think we can add it for all posts we want to find the posts and likes count and if it's liked by me as well so uh, first let's maybe do likes count so let's do const likes count equals and uh, here we can do like let's import this one and here we can use count documents that are post of uh, a specific post id but the problem is that we actually need to get all post ids from here so instead of counting the documents we can't count likes for a specific post we need to get all the we need to count likes for all those posts that we are selecting here so first maybe let's add a limit here of uh, let's say 20 let's put it under the sort just to be sure that we don't get uh, too much of a uh, of uh, too much uh, too big number of the posts and uh, to find likes count for all the posts will be really inefficient because if we have 20 posts and we will head database once here and then here we need to hit the database 20 times to count documents for each post i think it would be a simpler way would be to save it on a post level as a cache so when we like a post let me go to this uh, like api we are saving a like object but let's also count those likes for a specific uh for a specific post and let's save this count on the post level so um here we are removing a like here we are creating a like but uh, after removing or creating we want to um, also update post 
and we want to update the count of the likes there inside. So first inside my post, I will put likes count here. That will be a number. Um, actually, I will move a type number and I will do default will be zero and I will refresh app just to be sure so it finds the changes and uh, now inside the like endpoint let's see if we are liking a post we want to also find it so let's do post find let's find one by id post id const post equals this and we want to do post likes count equals uh, post likes count plus one and then we want to save it as well. So let's do post, save, and let's do await here. Uh, oh, sorry, it should be another way around. Here we are removing like, so it should be minus one. And underneath we are adding a like, so it should be plus one here. But um, maybe instead of adding a like or removing a like, we can just count them. So instead here of removing a like, uh, minus one let's do uh, likes like count documents and we will count it for the post that is um post uh, id and uh, the same will go underneath so if we have an existing like we are removing this like and then we are finding the post and updating the post likes count by uh, counting all the likes inside the like collection and I forgot a wait here um, but because we are doing those three rows here and here I can probably put it as a separate function here so uh, let's say function update uh, likes count it will do this but we need post id here as a param and uh, it should be async yeah so uh, now instead uh, here we should do just um, update likes count for this post ID and it should be a wait and the same thing we can do here underneath yeah so um, if we have existing like we are removing this like from the like collection and we are updating likes count for this post ID and so for this post ID we are finding this post and we are updating the likes count the cached value of the number of the likes for this specific post all right so um, this should work now and uh, the cool thing is that for now let's see if we refresh this and let's see we have posts here and you can see we have likes count that is zero let's see if i hit this hard uh something has broken here something is broken here we got 500 on the like api so something did go well mm, let's see this error post save is not a function post save is not a function um okay i forgot about a wait here yes post is not a post object it was a promise now it's a post object let's refresh let's hit this heart and it's liked now if i refresh uh, it's not liked but uh, let's see we get posts here and the response preview the first line the first post has likes count of one yes this is what we wanted now on the index so uh, our home page let's see we are getting all the posts here and we are passing to post content but now we here actually have uh, something called this one likes count so let's do likes count yeah and now we can uh, we can pass it to our buttons so let's do likes count likes count and also here likes count likes count so now maybe if i refresh we have this one here so we have the number of the likes but we don't have the if it's liked by me or not so let's now go back to our um posts api endpoint so we get the likes because it's cached but now i need to know if any of those posts are liked by me so we are sending posts but we are not sending if it's liked but if those are liked by me how we can uh, how we can put it first uh, instead of sending just the posts we will send an object of information we will send both posts and uh, 
posts here and other information. So now it's, if it's broken, it's broken because we've changed from only posts to an object that contains posts. But let's fix it inside our index page. We have this post. We are setting posts from data. Now it's inside the posts that we want to set it. So now we have, now it works. But now um, we want to know what posts are liked by me. So let's say that we will send a property here called liked by me, or maybe IDs liked by me. And it will be an empty array for now, but uh, I can find those IDs. I just need to, um, I can define it here and uh, how we can, let's say this will be an empty array here and we'll send it like this. But now let's first find posts liked by me. And here I will not s uh, select all possible posts that I liked in the system, but only posts from this 20 or max 20 posts. So if there are any more posts that are not visible on this page, we will skip those. We are only interested in the posts we are actually selecting. So uh, for those posts, uh, I know which, I want to know which one of the, uh, those are liked by me. So I want to select likes, find, um, I want to find likes where the author is me. So uh, session user ID. And, uh, and another thing is uh, that post IDs should be IDs from this. So I don't want to select all possible posts I like, only the IDs from those. So um, maybe I can put it like this, or maybe I can map through those posts and just select the ID. So now this will be, this will return an array of IDs. So we are selecting po likes from those posts that are liked by me. So author needs to be me, the currently logged in user, and the posts, we are only checking the posts we are selecting. So let's see now, um, we are we're having those likes, but now we want only the IDs. So uh, for the likes, let's, uh, yeah, and I forgot about a wait here. That's why we should use TypeScript, but maybe next time. If you want to, if you want me to add TypeScript to this app, let me know down there in the comments. So maybe I can do this in the next video. But for now, posts liked by me, we need to get IDs. So let's map through them. And for each like, we want to get like post. And here inside we have the ID of a post. And um, now let's refresh and let's see what do we get inside posts. You see, we have this IDs liked by me and we have one ID because we liked only one post, but now we can use it. And let's go to our index page and uh, let's add more state uh, IDs liked by me and set IDs liked by me. And uh, let's fill this state. So set IDs liked by me from response data IDs liked by me. So now I believe we have uh, this information here inside our state. So now we can use it inside our post content. So for a specific post content, for example, this one, I will send if it's liked by me or not. And liked by me should be true or false, depending if the ID of this post is inside the liked by me IDs, uh, IDs liked by me uh, state. So um, let's search if IDs liked by me includes this post ID, then we know if it's liked by me. So now let's use this inside post content. We can put it here and we can pass it to our buttons. Liked by me equals liked by me. And now the same will go to the buttons that we also have here because we have two different versions depending if it's a bigger or smaller layout. Um, so now we have this liked by me, liked by me default, default is false, liked by me, liked by me. Well, uh, let's try to print it here, liked by me, uh, one or zero. And we have zeros on all the posts and should be one on this one, I think. Let's see, uh, the post I actually like is this BD6. Let's see if it's the same ID here. Yes, it's the same ID. 
it here bd6 so uh, something is uh, wrong here let's see mm, let's print it even here so liked by me should be one or zero and here we have one and now even this one is displayed maybe it just needed some refresh the app needed some refresh yeah but it works now let's go back to buttons and let's remove this text from here yeah so now it works and now let's try to unlike this and this didn't work so let's see uh inside the, let's see post buttons we have this error here on line 13 and it's because we are not seeing this like let's see uh, on the like api endpoint we are sending the like only during liking and not when we unlike so we need to add a question mark like this to know let's refresh i like and i refresh and it's still liked if i dislike it's zero and it still works yes so that is awesome and uh, one thing i would like to add is uh, let me show you um here we have Elon mask if i like here and they have some kind of animation here and i would also want to add it to my uh, maybe not the same animation but we can add something right so we'll make it uh, so it will look prettier um so there is um let's search for there is a package or library called react uh, flip numbers and the thing is uh, it flips numbers like this so instead of just updating the zero to one we want to flip it so it goes up and down so uh, i will just copy this name and i will uh, add it to my app with yarn yarn add this if you are using npm or want to use npm only you can go like this right but now we have it so now we can use it probably like this so well, let's see we have likes here but instead of this likes count let's put this and uh, flip numbers is not imported we need to import it first let's see we need to import it like this let's go to the top and let's import it and now let's see yeah it looks really bad but we can fix it um here we have this flip numbers first let's remove this background shall we uh it didn't work but maybe we need to refresh it yeah and uh, the color is red but it shouldn't be if we get rid of this color maybe it will take the default color yes now let's change the number it should be a string but uh, let's do likes but likes count and let's do two string so now we have zeros here but now the problem is that it's um it's not aligned here so let's see let's inspect this so we have here our span and here is our button the button is flex but uh, we need to add the items center i think yeah now it's centered and we have the zero so it's aligned and now check this if i click hard nothing happens oh no it changed let's maybe close this one you see now it's animating the zero and one goes up so it's like flipping those numbers so that's cool uh if i log in as another user and uh, we can make it to two anyway um yeah actually we need a logout button and uh, let's fix it next so on our index page we need to find let's see we have layout here then we have posts let's add another div here with some class names and um, here let's add a button that will log out us and on the bottom yeah we have this logout button but uh, let's fix it so we will have some so it will look better it's a little better so let's do um background of twitter white and text and uh, black and let's padding on the sides of five on the top and the bottom should be two and let's make it rounded full and uh, on this div let's make it uh, padding of five on each side and the text should be centered yeah and maybe the border let's add the border border top border twitter border yeah so we have a border here now when we click this logout button let's prepare a function that will log out our user logout and uh, 
what do we need to do? Uh, we need to update this user info that we are getting from here. We need to update the user info that we our custom hook is sending. So we need actually to pass this as well so we can update information here. So here we can have user info and set user info as well. So we can use it when we logs out. When we logs out, we can do set user info to null. And um, and another thing that we our decision that we are using from the next auth has also sign out method. And I think it's oh it shouldn't be here. Sorry, it should go to logout. I think it's async, so let's do await and let's add async here. Yeah, and has it been imported? Sign out. Yes, it is. So now we can use this logout inside our button. So let's do on click logout. And let's see if it works. If I click this button, well, something has changed. And okay, so now we are logged out, but we are still seeing this logout button. Okay, first we should hide this logout button if we are not logged in. If user info only, if we have user info, then we are showing this uh, diff with logout button. Otherwise, we don't. Well, I think logout button doesn't work. We are doing sign out and we are doing set user info to null, but uh, it still does this uh, loading user info. Mm, let's see, use user info. We are using the session from next out react. Same here with sign out. Oh, uh, why doesn't it work? Let's see. Let's see if we have a user info here underneath. Let's print it somewhere. So here, let's do user info username. So use. So as you can see, we are logged in still. So this button didn't do anything. Let's see. Uh, we do log out and set user info to null. We do set user info to null. Let's see, use user info. We are passing this set user info. Let's maybe make this one to null as default. And uh, we still have this, my username here. All right. I think I know what it can be. Something is like refreshing when I hit this button. Something is changing. Let's see if I comment this thing out. Does it still do this refreshing thing? No, it does not. Uh, it goes to this PK username page. And then if I refresh, it goes back. All right. I think that I should fetch a session information here. So let's do a const and uh, data equals use session. And let's this rename this to session. And uh, well, let's print this session somewhere. So let's print session and uh, user and uh, maybe an ID. So we have this ID. But when I maybe when I click this sign out, log out, we'll still get this ID. It goes to this, uh, if we don't have username, it goes to username form, and then it goes back. Let's see, I will first uh, clear all the cookies to test it uh, properly. Let's go to application, let's clear website data, let's refresh. Okay, now it's broken because we are fetching a user ID somewhere inside use user info, use user info, we are getting a user ID. But first we should check if we have it. So if we have it, let's do question marks. If we don't have it, then let's stop here and just return nothing. Okay, so now it says loading user info, but nothing can be loaded because, uh, well, we don't have a user ID. So uh, here actually we can we can do set status to unauthenticated. And here instead of done, let's do authenticated. So we'll have the uh, same statuses as they have. Okay, now we get an error inside the username form, inside components, username form. But why we want to show this username form? Let's see if we don't have username. But first we need to check if we have a user info at all. If we have user info but don't have username, then we show the form. Okay, so uh, right now we are showing just an home with this form, but maybe we shouldn't because we are not logged in. And uh, let's see here, if we are not logged in, so no user info, then let's return no user info. Right, and uh, probably most likely here, instead of no user info, we should redirect the user 
to um, we can keep it no user info but we should redirect the user to the login page so let's do router but i think we don't have it defined here no so let's do const oops const router equals use router and now we can do here router and uh, push push to the login page and this should work now we are at slash login now let's login again to my account yeah we are seeing this id if i click log out oh now it works so now if i log in with another like test account i can do jane jones i can do pk username continue yeah and uh, this works now we can hide this id because we don't need it anymore and uh, now everything works so uh jones is testing one two three tweet we have it here oh it should be jones it should be jane sorry but um it works so now uh, as you can see this is my post by david here and it has one like by me but now as jane i can add another so we have two likes here right now uh so that's cool so logout works and uh, now let's maybe go back to the post page and uh, on the post page uh, the next thing that is really important is uh, actually replies so uh, so we can reply to this uh, post same here we should add the border here and here should be a uh, form for replying as they have it here so uh, let's go to our post page so we have it inside pages username status and this id and we have post content big and underneath we want to have this reply form so um let's create a div class name because we want to have some uh, border here let's do border top and border twitter border well maybe not like this um should go maybe here and uh, this thing should be visible only if you are logged in so let's grab user info so const user info equals use user info not user info use user info like this so now let's check if we have user info here if bang bang user info why i'm doing bang bang because uh, this is object and one bank will change it to false if, uh, it's an field object and double bang bang will change it from object to a boolean so it will make the opposite with one bank and with two exclamation marks it will convert this to boolean so if we have user info then we want to show this uh, show this border top and a post form inside post form inside so we have it here but uh, well as you can see here they have like a more compact version of this form and maybe we can fix it as well so first thing is let's just add the padding on the top and the bottom here say five yeah and now let's for this post form let's add the uh, we should do on post but let's put an empty arrow function for now but let's add also a compact as a param now here we can distract this compact param here uh, so we can put the tweet button as a third column here if it's compact version so uh, here we have this form and we have this div flex that has uh, two children one is the avatar another one is the text area with the button but then another thing we can do is that if it's compact then we will put a button here same button so i will copy this from here and put it here yeah almost uh, let's put it inside a separate div so it will no not stretch it yeah and uh, let's make it centered so for all children inside this flex let's do items center well it's not exactly what i wanted but almost there uh well let's say that item center will be only for compact so let's make this an uh, string like this and uh, here i will put an if statement if statement here and uh, if we have a compact then we want to put item center otherwise nothing else and this button here should be removed uh, so let's see and uh, this is this one uh, no not this one this one should be removed mm -hmm. so let's do if not compact not compact then okay now it's a little better 
For this compact button, let's add class names on the div so we can add the padding left of two. Yeah, and the text area could be a little smaller. Let's see here. Yeah, it should be much smaller. Mm, uh, let's see. Uh, here we have text area and we don't have any have on it, but uh, let's put it like this. Uh, I will make this uh, string like this and now I'll add a space here and plus and here if compact then I want to add half of 12 otherwise half of 24 let's see so now it's this big maybe it should be even smaller if it's compact let's say it will be 8 now uh, 8 is too small let's do 10 yeah I think 10 will work can we do 12 mm, it should be like it should be be like one line 10 yeah I think this will work I think this is uh, this is good. It's not centered here. If it's compact, the items should go center. Is it centered? I don't think so. The text area doesn't seem to be centered. So if it's compact, let's add also margin top of one. Yeah, now it's better. Maybe let's do two. That's too much. Let's do margin top of one. Yeah, uh, that should work. Uh, but uh, the placeholder should be different not what's happening the same placeholder that we have here but uh, instead we should have uh, tweet your reply so uh, this placeholder what's happening let's cut it and we'll have a constant called placeholder or a param and we will add it as a, a param here so placeholder default this so it's still what's happening but now we can pass the placeholder inside our post page we have this post form we can put placeholder inside this uh, placeholder we need the tweet your reply so let's do tweet your reply yeah so we have tweet your reply here all right so um, now when someone uh, treats a uh, tweet a uh, reply we want to show this replay here so uh, the next part is actually that underneath here we want to show replies so a uh, class name with some border top border top border twitter border and the replies go here and here we'll show the replies to our post so now we can fix that we show the replies here but we don't have any replies yet so um we can put the reply here but it will create a new post um so is it reply yet reply yet and you can see if i tweet here it's uh, it doesn't show here but it will show here and now the problem is that for this post you can see if i refresh and go to network page posts and uh, posts the first one is it reply yet and uh, we don't have any id to the parent post and it should be id for example on this one so uh, inside our post post model we need to add a new property called parent and this parent property will be type of mongoose object id and the reference will be the same so the reference will be post so if this is the main post so any post that is on the home page the parent will be empty but if the post is actually a reply for example here if we reply here then the reply that's uh, that's going to be shown here will have the parent this parent the id here will be the id of this post so we need to send it from this form um post form let's see for now we are sending only the text and not the parent so maybe we can get the parent from the props parent and parent here so we send it and now let's see post form is used on the index page and on the post page so on the post page so this page and this post form here we should add a parent and id to this post so we have it actually here inside in the uh, param of the url so we can do just id parent id like this and now let me just uh, restart the app just to be sure and uh, well now if we post let's see how it looks like inside posts here uh, we are getting the here we have get here we have post request we are getting the text 
but we actually can, can get also the parent PID and we can pass it here parent so it will be saved as well so uh, now let's try now it should be a reply and if I tweet uh, it shows here but uh, let's I will refresh posts posts the first one and now it should be reply but as you can see it has this uh, parent with the ID so now the first thing that on the home page we don't want to get the uh, posts that ha that are reply or maybe we won't let's leave it for now uh, let's first go to this one uh, well first I want to fix the links because he I can't click here I can click only on the text so uh, on the post uh, content let me fix this link first link to the content here we have the text but let's put the div with uh, with full and let's put text inside can I click here now it works um, let's add the cursor uh, of type uh, pointer yeah now uh, now it's clickable even here yeah that's good but now we should be able to display the uh, replies here and uh, so Maybe first let's hide the replies from the home page, shall we? So inside the pages uh, uh, posts API here on the get request where we are selecting the posts for the home page. Let's exclude the posts that have parent. So let's do parent null. So now this uh, is it a reply yet is visible, but uh, if I remove this, and I refresh we have this now it should be a reply and now if I add parent null we don't get this now it should be a reply so um, this now it should be reply should be visible here so let's go back to um, post content post content no let's go to post page and uh, in here replies go here we need to fetch all the replies mm. so we are fetching this post but we also need to fetch replies so let's do axios get and api posts and here let's do parent equals and uh, this id and uh, then we can get response and for this response we can save the posts inside our state so let's put it here replies and set replies use state default will be empty array and uh, let's do set replies to response oops response data okay now uh, instead of replies go here let's do if uh, replies uh, length is bigger than zero then let's do oh, not like this then let's do replies map and for a specific reply we want to do div and um, let's do just um, post content and uh, we will just pass this reply here and all the props that we have inside okay so uh, now we don't have any replies let's see if i make this bigger so we are fetching posts here with this parent id but uh, well we get a lot of posts uh, let's see uh, so instead of putting everything that is inside response to replies we should only put posts but now we also have uh, ids liked by me so uh, we should actually save it as well as uh, const and here replies like by me and set replies like by me and now let's save it set replies like by me and response data and here ids liked by me yeah and uh, we get all of those let's add some padding here so div class name let's add padding of five and border top and border twitter border now we get too much border here maybe we can get rid of borders from here that will work and uh, let's add liked by me and reply is liked by me if uh, replies liked by me includes the id of the reply so reply that underscore id okay so uh, i can uh, click for example here and this works yeah so uh, that's cool now the problem is that we are showing too many replies it should be only one reply so um, 
let's see here we should only have one reply so let's go back to our posts api and for the get method of the request here we are fetching all the posts without checking the parent that we are sending so as you remember for replies and uh, let's see network if i refresh we are fetching posts for this parent id here and uh, but we are not checking this parent id here so let's do const parent equals um request query parent or null as a default so now instead of parent null i can do parent if we pass anything we are only selecting posts for this parent if you are not passing anything we are just selecting 20 latest posts without any parent now let's see and now as you can see we have only one reply and that's nice so um this works but the one thing uh, that doesn't work yet is updating the count of the comments here so when i added this reply we should add the number of the comments here should be one so uh let's see here we are posting uh, a reply or a post doesn't matter but here we should actually check if we have a parent then uh, we know it's a reply if we know if it's reply we can go to the parent post so this one if we are posting this reply we know that the parent id is this so we can fetch this post and update the comments count so uh, let's do const parent post equals and now uh, post find by id and here just parent here we'll do await and uh, we need to update the post model because we have likes count but we don't have uh, comments count it will be number default will be zero and i think i need to restart the app and um, then we get the parent post we do parent post comments comments count plus plus or equals equals uh, parent post comments count plus one and uh, then parent post save and here await and that should do now if i add another reply here let's do reply to to it first the replies didn't refresh and second this didn't refresh but maybe if i refresh the page uh, this still didn't change but maybe we have it inside our database so let's see um the post with this id preview post we have comments count that is one we are just not passing this so on the post page let's see uh, we have a post uh, here we have replies here we have post content for our big uh, post so the main one here we want to pass uh, comments count and the comments count well we actually we are actually already passing this with this post but we are not using this here so uh, let me format this a little better i'll put it like this we have likes count like by me and uh, let's add the comments count uh just like this and comments count should go to the first button so uh, we need to pass it to post button so let's do um comments count equals comments count and we have post buttons also here comments count equals comments count and inside post buttons we can do comments count and on the first button we can show it let's do comments count right and uh, as you can see now this thing is one so this worked uh, didn't work for the first but maybe instead of uh, adding plus one we can actually count the replies that would be nice so it will fix itself let's go to posts api and we here we are doing plus plus but instead we can do equals and here await and we can count the replies post count documents and here we count for this specific parent so uh, comments count in, we are counting the documents that have exactly this parent so even the one that we just created that should work so now if we add a reply it should be free here so let's see reply free 
to it. If we refresh, we get free here because it has been recounted. All right. But uh, another thing is that um, this should refresh and those should refresh. So let's see. Um, inside our post page, we have this reply form that is here with your reply. But you can see on post, when we post a tweet, nothing happens. Instead, we should actually call those two call those two so we will refetch the uh we will refetch the post and the replies so first we need to put those inside the functions or maybe one function um let's uh do one function function fetch data simple as that and uh, let's put it here and here just fetch data and if we do a reply we can do just uh, fetch data like this now if we do reply for it should get automatically here and it should be updated this comment count to four let's see we get here and here we have four so that's good so the next really important feature will be actually a user page so we could actually click those usernames here or name here or maybe avatar and go to a page for this user with a cover and the avatar bigger here and uh, some bio showing here and only posts for a specific user so uh, first let's go to post content and let's update so we'll have the links on the names and on the avatar let's see mm, so first let's fix the avatar it should be a link and the link should go to the author username so let's do backticks because we'll put the variables here it should go to now oh, we can do like this and the plus author username yeah so if i hover well it should be also uh, let's put a separate div with class names cursor pointer and let's put this avatar here inside so we have this pointer cursor here and if i click it goes to slash david bashko but it doesn't work we get 404 because we need to fix this route first but uh, let's fix the names first so those are also links so let's see uh, here we have those spans and uh, let's put those spans inside the links so link uh, to author username yeah we need one here and another here so first we'll have this uh, name and the second we'll have this uh, username so now i can click on those but same i need to add the cursor pointer here cursor pointer here and the cursor pointer there so now i have this hand cursor here and here so i can click on this or avatar on this username or this name doesn't matter we get 404 but the links are fixed all right so uh, the next let's fix the path for this uh, username so we have here username status id but now we need a file for just username so let's do pages new file and just username same as the uh, directory created but with dot js at the end yeah so we have uh, both username like this as a directory but it's for deeper um, directory and deeper routes here we have status and then the id and this is for just username so this kind of url so let's do export default function as always and let's call this one a uh, user page and here just return div user page now it should uh, we have user page so the first thing is uh, i want to have get this username so let's do const router equals use router from next router and uh, now let me grab the username from router query and now let's try to print it here username right so uh, now we just need to fetch the information for this specific user of this username and uh, make it display like this all right so instead of div let's start with this layout component we have so it will add some borders and stuff next part um let's put username here so we have something the next part let's see they have this uh, name and the amount of tweets maybe we can just stick with the name but uh, they have this arrow back to the home page so um let's fix it here um the same arrow is actually used for the 
post. So as you can see, it's here. So let's go to this post page and let's see. Uh, here we have it. And um, here we have this as a link. And I think we should put it as a different, as a separate component. So inside components, I will create a new file and let's call this one uh, navigation link or maybe top navigation link.js and here export default function top navigation link and uh, it will return all this. But instead of saying this tweet, we are going to have a property for this uh, param for this uh, component called uh, title. Why not? And let's do title and uh, let's say default will be tweet. And another thing is maybe let's add also URL that default will be homepage and we'll change this one to URL in case we want to change URL to something else. But now let's go to back to where we took it from. So this tweet, now we can do a uh, top nav link and it still works as you can see, but for the Jane Jones, we can use it as well. So here, username, user page, let's use a uh, top nav link and let's add the title of, uh, we can put username for now, but it should be uh, the name of the user and not the username. So it should be Jane Jones with capital letters and stuff. For now, I will put the class name here so we can have some padding on the sides of five and padding on the top of, let's say two. So we'll have some spacing here. And uh, well, now we need to fetch the information about the user. So now let's first fetch this uh, user. Um, we need to use effect. So we'll run a function um, when this page opens. Use effect, the first will be an empty and the second will be just a uh, Let's say that dependency will be username. And here we want to fetch the user information, but I don't think we don't have any, we don't have such endpoint. Let's see API. We have users and here we can get the user. So yeah, we actually have it, but we can only fetch it by ID and not by the username. So maybe instead of doing ID like this, let's do ID like this. It will be the same, but here we can also add username. And instead of find by ID, let's do find one. And here let's put both ID and username. And wherever comes here, if we get the ID, it will try to find it by ID. And if we pass the username, it should try to find it by username, I think. So let's go back to our user page and let's do Axios get uh, slash API slash users a uh, question mark and now username equals and now we need this username here and here before we do this axios thing let's check that we have this username so if we don't have any username let's just return nothing here but then after we fetch the information about user let's see how it looks like and just a user as a property to an object uh, let's do response and with this response we want to save the user from response uh, data user to a state so let's do const um let's call this one profile info to not mix with user info because user info will be currently logged in user and profile info will be info of the user that we are actually visiting so i can be here logged in as me david but i'm visiting jane jones so profile info will be jane jones but user info with this extra hook that we created will be for me for currently logged in user so profile info and set profile info equals use state and um, now we can use it here set profile info and response data user yeah and now we can check here uh, that all of this will be visible only when we get a uh, profile in if we get profile info we can check we can show the username and this arrow it's okay but here the rest will be only if we have profile info if we have profile info and let's add here by bank then we will create a div here and uh, well let's see what do we have here underneath and uh, well actually even this link should be underneath for profile info because we will put 
profile info name here so we'll have the actual name jane jones right but uh, under this uh, arrow button what do we have we have a cover photo and avatar that is much bigger and then we have follow and follow and uh, other buttons so let's start with a cover so i think i'll put it as a separate component here new file cover.js and here as always export default uh, function cover and uh, well what do we want to what do we want to put here let's just return a div for now and div will be class name and let's put the half of this will be 12 and let's say background color will be twitter dark gray or maybe twitter border cover goes here now let's try to display this so here cover like this and uh, let's see we get a uh, cover but let's make it bigger let's make it 24 still too small let's make it uh, 36 now oh, that should work let's decrease the space here so uh, we have cover but here we here we have a lot of space that we don't need um let's see if we open this okay this uh this thing has margin bottom of five. Let's maybe change it. Uh, it's this top nav link. Let's maybe change it to two. Yeah, that's much better. Uh, maybe we need to fix it on a post page. Whoops. Now what's going on? Let's clear all the cookies and let's fix it. Application and uh, clear site data. Okay, we are in some kind of loop. Let's go to index page. You remember that we had this uh, user's endpoint here. And here I hoped that if we getting from the query both the ID and username, here they will try to uh, find. If we get the ID, it will try to find it by ID. If we get the user, it will try to find by username. But the problem is that when we sending the ID, as we do now, uh, user's ID equals this, then the username is null. And then it tries to find the user with ID null, uh, ID this and username null. And there are no, uh, there are no users with uh, ID this and username null. So uh, I need to change this thing to if we have ID, then find by ID. If we have username, find by username. If we have ID, then uh, um, we can find by ID. We can actually do something like this here, user. If we have ID, then we can do this, otherwise this. Oops, sorry. If we have ID, if we have ID, then we can do await user find by ID and just ID here, otherwise uh, by username. So now it works. And now it should work if I put back this uh, redirect login. Yeah, everything works as it should. And... Uh, now, where were we? We were at the, I'm logged in as me. Maybe I can log out and log in as uh, Jane Jones. And I want to go to my profile. So let's continue with the profile. So we have this cover, but uh, we don't get, we don't have any cover saved on our user. So let's go back to models and let's open this one and we have only username image uh, so we can update the avatar so we have image but we don't have any cover let's see what else do we need uh we need to have cover and we need also to have a bio at least so here i will add a cover that will be string and also bio that will be string as well and i will restart the app just to be safe and uh, well now we should be able to update the cover so let's go to cover.js and uh, let's see so uh, let's just remove this text for now and uh, let's add an avatar so it will look uh, better so let's go to a user page and we have cover here and uh, here underneath let's put the div with some class names but let's add uh, let's put an avatar here and we need source and the source is inside profile info 
and I think it was uh, image, yeah? And uh, we want to make this avatar bigger, much bigger. Let's put it in separate div and um, just for this avatar. And uh, this avatar should be big. So let's say that when we pass big param, it should get big. So let's go inside the avatar. And if we have big, then we want to change this um, width of 12 to something else. So uh, let's say that, uh, let's define width here, width class. And if it's big, then let's say it will be 28. And if it's not, it will be 12 as it is now. Now, instead of this, I will put this like this. And uh, here I will do plus and width class. So now it's big, well, but um, it's not fully rounded. It looks weird. Let's see. Okay. Um, let's see. It takes all the space and I don't know why. Uh, it should be with 28. Uh, maybe 28 doesn't work. Let's try with 24. 12 definitely works. 24. Mm, let's see. We don't have any classes here. But if we add with 24 here, then it works. Okay. So the problem is that if we put it like this, then the um tailwind can't find it maybe if we do like this 24 and do 28 as i wanted and here let's get rid of this and this yeah so this kind of works so let's get rid of this 24 let's see i will inspect this one yeah this kind of works the problem is that this image gets like a border on the side let's maybe change it to 24 yeah, 24 is good enough. So uh, let's go to our user page and let's see, we have this avatar here. And uh, on the another side of the avatar, we know want to put, we want to put buttons. Uh, so this div, the parent should be flex. And uh, we need to put the justify between. So uh, we'll have the space between. And now for the buttons, uh, we need to change this button to follow and follow. And uh, let's put a class name of, uh, well, it should be blue. So uh, let's make background Twitter blue and the text should be white and we need some padding. So let's do a padding on the top and the bottom too. And on the sides, uh, it will be five and rounded full. All right. But uh, now for the buttons, we need some, uh, we need some uh, spacing. So let's say padding of two. Yeah, that should work. Mm, but now this avatar should go like a little bit up. Uh, so I think that uh, first, maybe I can start by um, adding some space here on the left side. So let's do a panic left of oh, two. Yeah. And now um, maybe let's do relative position here, relative and uh, here as well. Maybe not here. Now let's do minus top of uh, yeah, let's do 12. Yeah. Can we do 14? Yes, this looks much better. Mm, and the 16, it's too much. 14, 14 will work. But from the side, let's do five. Let's see how it looks on the Twitter. Yeah, but uh, we will also get like a border of five, maybe four. Yeah, like this. And instead of padding left, let's do a uh, margin left and let's do uh, rounded full and the border color should be black. Yeah, the same way as uh, they have it here. Maybe it should be thinner. Let's make border three. Now border two. Okay. Now four looks much better. Um, that works. And uh, we have top 14. Let's change 12. That works uh, better, I think. Right. So we have this follow button and we have the uh, avatar. The next part that we need to put is the name, the username and the bio. So um, let's put it on our reef. And uh, first let's put, um, let's say it will be H1. Why not? H1 with um, the name of the user. So profile info name. And let's say that underneath we will have H2 with some also some class names just in case. And inside, let's do profile info username. Whoops, username. And on the beginning, let's add upper sound. 
yeah almost there let's see first why do we have so much spacing okay this is because this is really huge and uh, this is really huge because uh, we need to change relative on this uh, avatar to absolute so it doesn't take space absolute and uh, let's see and uh, this absolute and top minus 12 and border and staff should be inside a separate div oops class name those and let's put the avatar here inside and the previous one should be relative yeah and now for uh, the naming here for this div we can add some spy spacing so on this div let add class names and let's say padding on the sides will be five and let's say let's add some pa margin top or padding top doesn't matter two yeah and this works now the name should be thicker and bigger so let's do here font bold and text xl yeah and the username should be gray so let's do text and uh, twitter light gray yeah i think this will this will work and it should be smaller so let's do uh, text sm and uh, can we make the line smaller line have line have maybe like this does tailwind has a tailwind line have let's say let's see okay it has leading free and stuff okay so let's do leading free yeah maybe let's do leading four yeah uh this will work i guess maybe do leading five mm, that will work underneath we want to put a bio i just copy this so uh let's uh maybe we can even put here a div maybe without the div yeah let's put a div because we need some styling and let's put this as a text but we need to make it smaller so let's add some class name here to make it text smaller and uh, maybe some more spacing from the top margin top of two yeah and uh, some margin on the bottom of let's say two as well and uh, the last thing will be actually for us to add the, the posts of this user so um under those let's add the uh, here we have a div for profile info yeah, let's put here underneath uh we need to put the posts for our user so we need to fetch them first uh, let's do axios get and api slash uh, posts and here this will not work this param but we will fix it later the author should be the username or uh, maybe better uh, it should be let's do something like this i will remove it for now and i will put another use effect but this time the dependency will be actually profile info so here i will check if i have the id of the user if profile info uh, id if we don't have it don't do anything just return here but if we have it do axios get uh, slash api slash posts and the uh, author should be equal to profile info and uh, that id then we get response with um, let's just console log it for now response data like this now let's fix this uh, endpoint so we can grab the posts for a specific author so uh, api here posts here we have get it's uh, it grows pretty much and uh, as you can see here if we have id if we don't have id we are doing this mm, well let's do something like this let's grab uh, um author from the query here as well and uh, then instead of doing this let's do uh, let's define a constant called search filter and the search filter will be this as it was but if we have the author then we do something else so if we have an author we want to find for this author mm, and uh, the parent doesn't matter so now it should work let's see inside console nothing nothing happens let's see network we are not fetching those posts let's see why mm, can we do profile info.id no nothing happens now let's see console log and uh, let's uh, do profile info 
So here we are doing profile info. Okay, it's not that ID, it should be uh, underscore ID. And here the same underscore ID. Right, so uh, now we are fetching this. Oh, sorry, the underscore should go here. Same for this one. Now we are thing fetching. Let's see. No, we don't. Let's see if we get here, here. Yes, we do. And we are getting some posts. If I refresh, nothing has, sh nothing is shown anymore, but maybe I need to add another dependency or maybe I can remove it like this. Here, 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 here. Now it should be just profile info. Now let's get rid of this here. And as you can see, we are getting posts and uh, now let's try to display them. So uh, let's do const posts set posts equals use state and default will be an empty array but um, we also need uh, to save uh, posts um, like by me and set posts like by me and uh, now here inside instead of console logging let's do set posts response data posts and set posts like by me response data and here, as you can see, we get IDs like by me, IDs like by me, and we get one ID here. So uh, at least one of those should be like, mm. and now we can display those. So here underneath, let's say if we have this um, posts and the length is bigger than zero, then we can do posts map and for each post we want to put a div with some class names like border and stuff and inside we want to do post content and we put here all the information that we get from post but also we want to put uh, let's see um, liked by me and here we check that posts liked by me includes this post ID yeah and one of those is uh, liked and uh, to get rid of this uh, some of those we need pass key for this div so let's do key post ID and uh, let's add some padding here as well padding of five and the uh, border on the top border Twitter border yeah so it looks better let's make this thing smaller yeah this uh this should work now another small thing would be if i clicked on the comments i want to open the post as well so um buttons post buttons and we get the id of the post here so we can go to this post right now because we don't have the username but uh let's say we'll pass username as well uh so on uh, this is the first button so instead of button let's use uh link and the link will go to as uh, the back ticks here slash um username slash status slash and uh, id and uh, here we'll just put this button that we can actually change to just a div link is not defined okay i need to re-import link now it works if i click uh oh yeah sorry i need to do cursor pointer yeah so we get to reply for all right so uh, now i need to do the cover editable the avatar editable and the same for this uh, name and username and the bio so let's go to our user page and uh, let's see we will start with the avatar i just noticed that this link is wrong because we get this undefined even if it works i forgot to pass this um username to post buttons so in, uh, you see we are using this post but uh, username is i post buttons to create these links for this comment button but uh, i don't pass it from the post content so inside post content i will put, put username to be username and the uh, same on the post buttons here username username but it looks we don't have it here post content let's just put it like this now it's undefined but let's try again if we click it here it's still undefined let's refresh well it's still undefined let's see why uh, post content let's open this inside our mm, okay it shouldn't be username it should be author so uh, here and uh, and the bottom so here and here instead of using username 
with the author username. Now it should work. We go back and I click this one. I go to Jane Jones slash status. Yeah, so this works and now we can jump to this user. And now let's continue with our uh, cover component here. So I think the best way to update this cover and also the avatar would be to be able to drag and drop files. So uh, for example, I have here like an image and I want to drop it so it will upload and it will update the cover photo. Uh, so let's start by finding uh, there's a component called React File Drop. So it will be easier for us to make uh, drag and drop for files. And I will install this one. So let's do yarn add react file drop. Yeah. And now inside our cover, let's try to put it here. File drop. Yeah, it has been imported. And uh, well, here inside, let's see. They have uh, many uh, useful uh, functions here or properties. But the ones that we are going to need is uh, on, uh, let's see on the drag enter on drag enter and uh, then we also need like on drag leave then uh, on frame uh, drag enter and uh, on frame drag leave and uh, this one is called when we have a file over the window this one is called when we move the file outside outside of the window this one is called when we have file over this specific element. So for example, this div, and this one is called when we leave with the file from this area. So uh, uh, let's start by putting everything into a state. So when we have a file over the window, I want to know about this inside state. So let's call this one uh, first will be is file nearby. And uh, here set is file nearby equals use state from react yes and uh, then we can do something like this on frame drag enter let's do uh, set is file nearby to true and on frame drag leave we can do set is file nearby to false yeah so now let's see if we let's put this file drop outside of this div so let's put it here and closing of the div should go here and here let's say that if we have a file nearby is file nearby it will say nearby otherwise uh, no nearby i will make it uh, just something like this and uh, now let's see let's download a photo for example forest yeah this one will work medium now let's see if i drag this one nothing happens let's say let's say that this one will be default true Let's see if we will see the text. No, we don't see any text. Um, let's add text white. Okay, and we have a small error. We need to comment out those two just for now. And now we have nearby, but it should be it should be false here as a default, not nearby. But if we hover, then we are nearby with the file. If I take outside of the window, it's not nearby. If I hover, we are nearby. So um, we can actually add some extra classes for this div if the file is nearby. So let's say, let's do let extra classes equals empty string. But if is file nearby, then uh, extra classes we will add, uh, let's add maybe background gray 200, something like this. Now we can add those extra classes here to our div. And let's see, let's do plus extra classes now now we can see if i have file here it's uh, brighter and i and if i have it outside it's not bright that's really nice but um, another thing is that we can use those two functions to know if the file is directly over this area so we can change the color over even even more so let's maybe change this one to 400 and let's add some more state is file over and set is file over use state default will be false and here on drag enter we will do set is file over to true and here the opposite so it will be set is file over to false and uh, here let's add some extra classes for this is uh, file over then we add uh, even more classes and let's add background blue 500 and now let's see now i have filed this um, photo and if i hover 
on the body here, you can see that it changed the background color to the brighter gray. If I hover even more, well, then nothing happened. Let's see if I comment this one out. Maybe it's because we can't have uh, many background colors. No, it's not about this. Let's see here, background blue 500 inch should work. Let's maybe change this text to know if file over, over, not over, but if we put it here, still not over. Maybe we need to put it directly on the text. No, nothing changes. If we change this one maybe to true. Okay, the colors work. Uh, sorry, I have misspelled here. Here should we have on drag over like this. Now it's blue when I'm over this area. All right, so let's put extra class. It is gray. We can make it maybe first red and then blue. So now if I hover over the body of the website, it will be red. And then if I hover on this uh, area, it will be blue. Well, almost blue. Maybe it's because we can have two backgrounds at the same time, but it kind of works. Um, let's see here. Um, let's say that it will be white when we have a file nearby, but we don't have file over is file over. And now let's see. Now it's white and now it's blue. You see, if we have over the body of our website, then it's file nearby, but not file over. So we add background white. If it's a file over, we add only background blue 500. All right, so this works. Um, but now we need to um, decide what happens on drop of the file. So on drop, we need to update the image or upload an update. Let's define this function here update image and uh, well in this function we will get files here as a param first param and event as a second param just to be sure let's do prevent default on the event so we know nothing else will happen when we drop the file and uh, when it comes to the files what do we want to do with them we want to send them using fetch or axios to our api endpoint that we don't have yet so um, let's try to send it first. So uh, let's say we will use fetch, uh, fetch this time and it we will send it to API slash um, maybe upload. Yeah. And uh, here the method will be post because we are posting this image as a new image. And now we need also to send some body and the body should be this image, this uh, image from files. So uh, how we can do this? I think the easiest way would be to create a form data. So it counts data equals um, new form data. So we will uh, send it the same way that HTML is doing this. We create like an empty form data and then we can append this data with this file. So let's say this one will be a cover and uh, we just send the files the first file here. We add the first file to the data and then we need to send it as a body. I do just data like this. So now we can probably add a dot then here to say what should happen after we uploaded this. Mm -hmm. After we upload it, well, we should maybe tell the state that we are not uploading anymore. And here on the beginning, we should tell that we are uploading. So maybe we can show a spinner here or something when it's uploading. So I will put a state here, const is uploading and set is uploading. Default will be false. And on the beginning of our update image function, we will tag and uh, we will say set is uploading to true. And after we are done with the uploading, we will say set is uploading to false. Yeah. Now maybe let's quickly create this endpoint. So inside our API, let's create a new file and upload.js. And here as always, uh, export default function upload. Oh, well, we should probably call all the functions here handle as we do with other. And we have request response and this function is async. And uh, now what do we want to do? It just responds with JSON. Okay just for now and let's see if this works let's clear this console here yes yeah, so we are sending upload and um, it says okay maybe we can uh, add a spinner when we are uploading and uh, well this one still says that the file is over over this area but it's not anymore so uh, when we updating our image let's reset those two states to default so uh, set is file nearby 
to false and set is file over to false. And here, let's maybe do is uploading, then we will say upload, otherwise no, no text here. So let's test this. Yeah, we got this upload there. All right, but now let's go back to our uh, upload API endpoint and uh, we want to save this file somewhere. Yeah, so now we can't access Swift, uh, our file Swift request because those are sent differently. As you can see, we are sending this cover as binary and uh, Next.js doesn't have support for this uh, by default. So we need to start here by telling the Next.js that we'll handle the body parsing manually. So let's do export const config of our Next.js app. And in this config, let's say that API um, here will be body parser, body parser will be false, oops, false. All right, so uh, inside request body, we will have a row value, row value of the body and it will not be parsed by Next.js. So to grab the file, we are actually going to use a library called multi-party. And this is because um, the data we are sending is actually multi-party form data that HTML is using for sending files. So uh, I will install this one. So let's do yarn add multi-party. And uh, then inside our handler, or handle doesn't matter, let's do const form equals multi-party. Multi-party should be new multi-party, multi-party. And uh, we need to import it actually. So let's do import multi-party from multi-party. Here we need to do that form. And here inside we can do some options. And uh, well, the one option we need is actually upload directory. And let's say we will upload all files into, let's say, public. So we have this uh, public directory with uh, icons and stuff. All right. So um, we have initiated this form multi-party, but now we need to tell what should happen after we parsed the data. So form parse and we pass the request here and then we get an async callback. And in this async callback, let's see, what do we get? Well, we actually get here as params error. If there is an error, we get fields and we get also files. So first we just need to check if there is an error and uh, if it is, we will just throw this error. And now let's continue with the most important part, which is files. So uh, maybe we can do just response JSON with files to see how it looks like. And let me open here. Let's see what happens if I drop this file and upload. Well, we get an error. Let's see why. Okay, this is because we are responding with JSON OK. We should get rid of this so we can respond with JSON here. Now let's try again. I'll drop the file and nothing happened. Let's maybe restart and let's test again. Well, it looks it just worked. Let's test again. Let's do here console log. Yeah, actually we need to get inside this upload to see the response preview. Yeah, and here we have the cover. So we are responding with JSON with those files. We get cover and inside cover we have one file. And as you can see, we have field name and we have headers, we have original name and we have path where the file has been saved. So it has been saved inside our public directory, actually many files because we uploaded several times. Yeah, but it generates names for those. So that is really nice. And so inside headers, we get a content type and the content disposition. We are actually going to need this because I think we can actually upload those images into S3. So it will be better to store them there and not here inside our app. So I will log into my console. I will log into my private AWS account. We could actually use those files that we have inside public to show them as a over here, but it will be much more better to have them on S3. So um, first let's create a bucket on S3. So I'll do create bucket and let's say this one will be David Twitter clone and the region doesn't matter for me. And we don't want to pub, uh, block public access and that's everything we need. Now we need to create a user for this bucket. So I will go to my security credentials and users and I'll add users 
and the user will be maybe with the same name, David Twitter clone. And here we will need programmatic access. And now we can actually attach a policy. And let's see, we will create a new policy for this one. The only service is S3 and we will hit all S3 actions. But when it comes to resources, here any, any, no, here we will actually pick a bucket name, the one we created. So we will have access with this user only to this only one bucket name. So let's do David Twitter clone. Let's do add here any, any, any object. Yeah. And let's review policy name, policy David Twitter clone S3. And the policy is done. Now maybe we can find it here. Here we have it, David Twitter. No, it's not here. Let's reload. And uh, here we have it, policy David Twitter clone S3. Next, thanks. Review and create user. Now we have access key and the secret access key. So let's add them to our environment file. So in here, let's do um, S3 access key equals this one. And uh, let's do S3 secret secret access key. And we will need this one. I will change them later so no one else can use it. But for now, let's just save it. And uh, well, let's see here on our app. And uh, in here, we want to move this file. We have this all information about the file where it is. We want to upload it to S3. So uh, to do this, I will add yarn add S AWS SDK for JavaScript. And now let's import it. So we are going to need the S3 client from uh, its AWS SDK clients S3. Okay, so now we have this uh, file. Uh, now we have this uh, S3 client. We need to initiate it somewhere. So let's say that on the beginning of this handler, we will initiate S3 client. So S3 client const equals new S3. And here we need to pass some options. And the only thing we need is region. And the region will be, I think it was US East. I have picked US East one and credentials, credentials. And inside credentials, as you probably know, we need the access key ID, access key ID. And this one we will get from process environment access key ID. Maybe not, it should be S3 access key. So let's do S3 access key. And uh, here, let's do secret access key. And it will be S3 ac secret access key, like this. And uh, then we are done with our S3 client. So we can use it here to upload. So uh, let's do S3 client upload. And now when we are uploading, we need to tell what bucket we are uploading to. So bucket and the bucket name was, I think it was David Twitter clone. And uh, now the body and the body needs to be the body of the file. So the binary data of the file. So to get this from this path, we need to read it with uh, Node.js. So let's quickly import the file system library. And from file system, we have those here. And now we can read this file. So let's do a file system, read file sync. And uh, in here, we need to pass this path to the file. So it's files. Let's see, we get files, then we have cover zero and path files, cover zero path. And um, well, maybe we can, well, we'll fix it later, but we can make it simpler, I guess. All right. And uh, what else do we need here? We need ACL. So the permission for this file will be public read the name of this file. So it will be key here. And here to create the name, I think we can actually use this name here. So let me first grab maybe just this file, this part, and let's call this one file info. So we can take this part and instead of this, let's do file info and let's do file name. And I want to get this name from the path. So uh, let's do file info path and I want to split it by this uh, slash and get the second part. So the first uh, item, the zero part will be this and the first will be here. 
So the second actually, because the zero part will be this public and the, this part will be this slash and this that JPEG. So we have file name. Let's um, put it here, file name. And uh, let's see, it will be good to also put content type here. So content type and it will not be application. We need to get the content type from here. So we have it inside the file info and then we can go to headers and content type. So let's do file info and here we can go to headers and then we can go to content type. Yeah, this should work. Now maybe let's respond with just file info to know what file we have uploaded. But now after we are uploading, we don't know the URL to the file. And we can actually get this as a callback here. So the second param to the upload is actually a callback with some response. And um, so we get an error as always, and we get some data. And let's say we will just response with here, response JSON with um, both error and the data. So we will know what was, uh, where it was uploaded and if it worked. And let's also put here maybe file info so we can know how it looks like. So now let's maybe try to upload an image here and let's see, I guess it's still uploading Yeah, Now it's done. So we get an error and it says the bucket does not allow ACLs. Let's fix it. So let's go to S3 and let's open our bucket. Let's maybe go to permissions. Here, edit, this one looks fine. Let's see here, inside permission. Let's see here, inside permissions, we have this uh, object ownership, and then we need to actually pick your ACLs enabled. I acknowledge here, and let's save changes, and let's see if it works now. If I upload this image, and uh, no error, and we get some data, and we get the location of this file on S3 server, so if I open this in a new tab, I get the image. Yeah, so we get it, we get it inside data, we have something called location. So uh, we can actually use this location to know where the file is. And we can get this location. And for the currently logged in user, we can update the cover. So uh, here inside, after uploading, let's get the currently logged in user. And let's update the cover with this location of the new file. So let's first grab a session for our user. And then we also need to init mongoose because I forgot to do this here with a wait. So we'll have a connection to our database. Now let's grab session. So let's do session, await uh, unstable get server side session. Yes, of options. Yeah, and now inside the session, we should have a user ID. So let's do const user. Let's find this user first. And let's do user. Let's import this user, find by ID. And we have it inside session. So session user ID. And we need to have an await here. And now we need to add async here on this callback. And uh, here actually we can find it by ID and we can even update this. So find by ID and something with update and update. And the thing we are going to update is cover. So uh, let's maybe put it here lower. Let me reformat this like this. And uh, now we are going to update cover and the cover value will be this location. And the location comes from data. So let's do data dot location with capital L location like this. So now we are updating the user, finding and updating with new cover that comes from the data location from S3. All right, so uh, now maybe let's see if it works. So I will upload this image here and it seems like it worked. Maybe let's add another user. Let's add user information here to maybe see the updated data. If we upload again, we get even user data here and uh, well, let's see, here we have the cover and we get this file. So that's, that's really nice. So let's go back to our front part of the application inside cover. So uh, here in this den, we get a response with a lot of data. So inside data, we have user with this new cover location. So let's fix it. Let's grab the cover, new cover location. So um, as the const cover equals response data, and then user and then cover. Oops, 
cover right now and now we want to put this cover inside inside our image somewhere here so uh, let's say that we will get rid of this upload text for now or maybe we can leave it but we will put an image actually here so it will be visible uh, we don't have any params here we don't have uh, any source or anything but um, well i think we can uh, probably just add like this so source and now let's see where we use our cover only on the user page and here on cover we need to add source and uh, let's see we will get it from profile info and here just that cover all right so now let's go back to cover and let's see we have this image but we need to pass this uh, source that we get from our param here so now I refresh the page and you can see it kind of works but let's make it prettier let's maybe add a flex here so uh, yeah now it's a little better but for the image let's make it a width of 100% so width full yeah now it's a little better let's maybe try with different image to see if it works let's maybe search for bike and let's take this one medium let's upload it's uploading and uh, something went wrong okay so we don't get a user here inside cover component let's see here we don't get any user right so let's see i guess we had some kind of error let's try again well it kind of worked but let's see we get some kind of error here after uploading yeah um so let's see on the upload we don't get any let's see we get response then we go to data ah sorry i forgot well when we are using fetch we need to parse the response first so um, let's do const json equals response json we don't need to do this when we use uh, axios but in this uh, example i used a uh, fetch and here we need to do await and here we can add async because we have await here on the on this json and here instead of response data we will do json and now it should work let's maybe try with forest again yeah i think it worked if i refresh we get the forest but the problem is that now the image is stretched and uh, let's see if we can fix it let's maybe say that items should be centered so items center well now it's better but the image goes outside of the div let's see if i inspect it here you can see that the div is only here so maybe we can add overflow hidden yeah now it's much better and the image is not stretched so uh, now the next thing is that we need to actually update after we uploaded or maybe we even want to show this text about uploading that would be good and maybe not the text but maybe a spinner or something so uh, let's say if we are uploading then let's say we if we are uploading then we'll have a div saying uploading and if we are not uploading not uploading then we will show the image and here should be is uploading so now if i drop this bike again it's uploading and i refresh and we have the bike as you can see the problem is now that we also don't have those colors anymore because we have this image that is above this div so um we have those extra classes somewhere here that add those colors but uh, instead of putting this in this div i think we can put it on uh, another div let's make this one relative so we can make another div maybe here and uh, this one will be absolute just put it like here absolute and inset zero and it's way test okay so we have it here and we will add those extra classes here let's do extra classes let's see yeah but uh, we don't need this test we just need to add some opacity on those colors so let's do opacity maybe 90 percent so now if we have okay it's white now it's blue so it works maybe we can make it like 70 percent let's see now yeah yes that's really nice uh, but instead of this white let's make it darker a little bit let's make it gray off or maybe not let's make it blue 500 but opacity of um 30 and here if the file is over let's do opacity of let's say 80 
so we can get rid of this opacity 70 from here so now when we have file over the window it's a little bit blue if we put it even here it's more blue and let's see if we drop it it says uploading but we can make it look better so let's do class name and uh, well let's see well i think that even if we are uploading we can still show the image so uh, let's do that if we have any source then we will show this uh, image but let's put it maybe inside the div another div so we will do, do this positioning of the image just on this div so flex items um, center overflow, overflow hidden and the have will be on this div and uh, when we are uploading we will make um, this one also absolute of inset zero and uh, let's make it flex and items center and uh, justify center so this uploading text will be in the middle so let's test yeah uploading here in the middle but uh, well i was thinking that maybe we can add some uh, background color to this uploading thing so let's do style and i put as a style because i want this color i want this background to be semi-transparent but i will not use opacity because i don't want this uploading text to be transparent so here inside style i will do background color and uh, let's say we will use rdba here and then um, well i want to use like the same blue that we are using for this pattern so let me grab this one let me inspect here and in the background will be let's say 10 percent transparent so 0 0.9 and now if it says uploading well i don't see any background let's see okay i forgot about commas let's try again yeah uploading let's see again uploading yes it works and uh, but now instead of uploading i want to have a spinner so let's use a library called the uh, react spinners yeah i think it's this one let's see demo yeah and let's say we are going to use maybe this one pulse loader so instead of um uploading here let's do yarn add react spinners and here let's do pulse loader and we need to import this one so let's do import pulse loader from react spinners okay and now it should work let's maybe change the size of it to i don't know 24 and the color we can uh, probably use this rgba except it should be 90 percent. it should be 100 percent here and uh, let's see now if i drop this we get the spinner maybe it shouldn't be blue it should be white so let's do uh, hashtag fff now let's see yeah this looks really nice maybe we can make it a little bit smaller let's do maybe 18 yeah that looks really nice even smaller 14 will work and if the file yeah this will work but now the image is not changing so as you can see if i change to this forest it gets uploaded but it doesn't change because we need to notify from this cover our parent element that it has changed so let's do on change and this will be a function that we will call here if we have an on change let's do this with param as cover and uh, now we can get here where we are using our cover and we can do on change and we get source the new source of this image on change and we want to put it inside our profile info cover so let's I'll hit enter here so we have more space and let's do set profile info so we'll update our profile info and uh, well in here we'll get the previous value of our profile info and we'll return an object and in this object we want to put the previous value so let's do prev like this and also we want to update the cover to be this new source like this now it has updated but now let's try to update with this bike it didn't work let's see if i update then we get the bike maybe we can start by putting this into a separate um into a separate function so inside our user page let's create a function called the update update user image and in here we want to know what kind of image is it so let's say it will be type 
and uh, the source of the new image. And then let's do a console log type and source. Okay, and here, instead of this unchanged set profile info and stuff like this, let's cut it from here. And let's do on, uh, what was the name? Update, update user image, and the type is cover and the new source is source. Now let's get to console and see what happens when we upload. It's uploading and we get a console log with uh, type cover and the source. So it, it should work. Let's see if we do this, we get the previous value of the profile info. Let's see where we have profile info. We have profile info here, set profile info, and we are using this for our cover, right? Yeah, profile info, cover, right? Let's try to save it, refresh, and let's try with this forest. So we did get this console log, but uh, it didn't uh, uh, update the cover here. Let's see how the state looks like. So we have user page and we have some state here. Here we have the profile. Let's see the cover is this thing. Let's see, we get the bike and should be the forest. So this actually haven't updated our profile info. Let's make this like this. Let's just return a previous value here, but um, let's console log it first. Console log, console log the previous value. And let's see how it looks like. We update the bike and we have previous value with the ID and this cover here. Let's do maybe something like this. Now let's do previous, but uh, let's do const new profile info and it will be previous values, but new profile info cover will be new this new source and he will return new profile info. Let's see if this will work. Let's uh, upload this forest and nothing have changed. Maybe we can print this somewhere here at the top. Under the navigation link, we have this. Let's see if we, if it changes after we upload this by O underscore JPEG. No, it didn't, it didn't change. Maybe we can use pred operator here. So it will create actually a new object. And let's see if we update with this for us now. No, nothing have changed. Well, let me maybe just restart this app just to be sure, because this is a weird bag. So we have forest and it ends with this r.jpg. And if we put the bike, we need to refresh to see the bike. That is really weird. But uh, let's maybe pull the cover here. So uh, cover equals profile info cover. And let's print it here. So cover. Yeah. And now let's try to update this with this forest. Let's see if it changes. No, it didn't, it didn't change. So it looks like this set profile info is actually not updating our profile, info, which is really weird. Let's instead of the source, let's do just test. And let's see if this will change to test. Yes, it did. So the only problem is I think this source. Let's see if this source is updated. So uh, let's do console log here, source. Okay, so we have the bike and the source is the zero and JPEG. Let's see if we update the file, we get uh, all the same source, right? So this everything actually works, but the source we are getting from uh, this is an old source. So let's see, let's open cover. And here on change, we get this cover from the user. I think that the problem is that uh, where we are responding here in the upload with the user info, we are getting the user info here before the update and not after the update. So uh, I think we can just uh, add something here like source will be data location. And then inside our cover, instead of doing like this, let's respond here on change. Let's do JSON source. Yeah. So now if we try to upload this forest again, it changes. Yeah, that's really good. And uh, now back to our user page. Let's get rid of this cover from here and this constant because we don't need this. And this can be simplified a lot. So let's do as it was. And here, previous values and uh, with this cover to be new source. But instead of this cover, we should use type like this. Right, and we can get rid of this console log. Right, and this should work. So uh, 
we got our cover to work. So the next thing would be to make it work for our avatars. So uh, let's see. Let's see on our avatar. Maybe let's add the same on change. So we can uh, tell to the parent component if the avatar has been changed. And maybe we should also add editable that default will be false because we want to update this avatar and not other avatar, for example, here, if uh, we cannot, we don't want to have drag and drop on those avatars. So now let's see, the avatar is used on the user page. Here at the top, we can say that this avatar is editable, editable true. Now we need to implement the same drag and drop functionality we did cover. And uh, I don't want to just uh, copy everything and put into avatar module. I would like to create a separate component with those uh, extra classes and stuff like this. So let's maybe create a component called editable image.js. And here as always export default function editable image. All right. And uh, we will get a source and maybe on change what should happen after we change the image upload and and we want to know what type of the image is it is it a cover or photo or what else so we will know how to upload this all right so now let's go to cover and uh, let's maybe grab this state and extra classes yeah like this and uh, then we need this upload update image function so let's copy this and let's put it here and uh, the thing we need to update is this cover because we want to make it more general. So we'll use this type here. Yeah. And let's see under the function, we should actually return this file drop functionality. So let's do, let's grab everything and let's put it on inside editable image. And uh, well, let's see, it should do work. But uh, here we have some classes that are specific for the cover. So um, I think we should get rid of this have, for example, and uh, this have class or classes should be passed as a param. So let's say that here we will also get a param called the class name. So um, here inside we can do like this and space here and plus class name. So for this div, we are going to pass the class names. And uh, well, let's see, this should work now, I think. So inside our cover, we can actually get rid of all of this, I guess. And let's just return an editable image. We need to pass source and we need to pass on change and we can pass uh, class names, but let's make it empty like this. And uh, let's see. So we updated and this is broken because it didn't have this have 36. Now it has and it looks fine. So now we can get rid of the also unused, unused, uh, unused stuff. And uh, well, now our cover is this small and let's maybe try to do the same for our avatar to use editable image. So um, let's comment this part for now and uh, let's say that it will return an editable image maybe inside the div just to have some more spacing here. Inside the div let's return an editable image. Maybe we don't need this uh, div but let's see source will be source and on change will be on change and uh, well let's see what will happen now it's really small and uh, maybe we need to pass some class names and we will pass this with class yeah so it's this but now maybe we can even add those classes so let's do a string plus with class yeah and uh, now it's a little better but let's see Let's see, we get this black background, black border from our user page. So let's see, border, border on the avatar. Let's see where we have avatar here. And here we have the border here. I think we need to add overflow hidden. Yeah, so now our avatar works, but um, well, we can probably get rid of this, but we want also to pass here on this editable image if this avatar should be editable or not. So let's pass this editable. And now, as you can see, if I have this here, both cover and avatar eye are blue-ish. If I put it here, it's super blue. But uh, I think that first 
the first blue can be stronger a little bit. So uh, here we have uh, 30, let's do maybe 40, and here 90. And another thing, we need, we want to detect if this avatar should be editable, because those shouldn't be editable. Those shouldn't be blue, I shouldn't be able to drop here. So on this editable image, we got a new thing called editable, and um, well, let's say that default will be false. And uh, now uh, we get this file drop and uh, let's see, we get those extra classes. But let's say here, if uh, not editable, then uh, extra classes will be empty. Even if we hover and extra classes will be empty. So now if we hover, those are not editable, so it doesn't change any colors. All right, but uh, now let's see, this one is editable but we forgot to add editable on this cover. So let's go back to our user page. And uh, well, let's see, we have cover here. Let's add editable to true. Does it work now? No, it doesn't. So let's go back to cover. Let's grab this editable and let's put it here, editable, editable. So now it should be editable, yes. Right, so this works and uh, let's maybe, let's maybe try to upload an image for, for this person. So let's search for a woman because we are logged in as this uh, Jane and I want a square photo. And uh, well, it doesn't matter, let's take this one and let's download a uh, medium. And now let's try to update this one. It's still uploading, but we get an error. And uh, let's see, we are uploading and we are sending this as undefined. All right, that is not good. I think because on the editable image, we need to have a type, but we are not sending this either from the cover or from the avatar. So let's add type here and type will be cover for the cover, but for the avatar, let's add type. And here, not avatar, but let's see what is the name of this. Uh, let's open users, let's get preview and let's see what is the name of this avatar field. It's image. So let's put image here, right? Uh, so now let me refresh. If I upload this again, we still get an error here inside our API endpoint on upload. So let's, let's go to upload. And let's see, we can't find cover. We are uploading something here. Let's see payload. We send an image, not a cover. All right, so uh, let's go to our API endpoint and let's see here. All right, as you can see, we are updating here the cover to be this newly updated image, newly uploaded image to S3. But uh, well, this thing is shouldn't be always cover. We should get it from the uh, file information or somewhere here. So. Uh, Let's see, um, I actually forgot what we get inside this uh, file info, but uh, maybe somewhere in here we get the name of this uh, file type. So let me fresh and let's try to upload this bike. Yeah, we get this bike, let's see, upload, preview, we get file info. Inside file info, we have field name that we are going to use. So uh, instead of doing cover like this, let's do brackets and the file info and the field name. So this will be cover or, or it will be image. So it will be properly updated for our user. And we have also cover here. Mm. And this is uh, trickier because uh, we don't know here what files do we have inside, what properties, what, uh, what file names we have inside. So we need to actually, I think, look through them. Let's see, uh, let's maybe print files inside our response here. So we'll know how it looks like. I will update and I'll upload the bike. Let's see. So uh, we want to check the files. Okay, and we have the name of this file, maybe not the name of the file, but name of the type of the file here as a key to this object files. So we can actually do something like this. Instead of doing this cover and this file info field name, we can define the type to be from the files, we need to get the first key. So let's do object keys, files, and we want to get the first one here. Yeah, and now instead of cover, let's do type. And same here, instead of this, let's do just type, All right? And uh, now let's see if it works. So let's put this new person image here. On change is not a function. Yeah, I think we forgot that, um, 
we forgot on our user page to pass to our avatar what should be what should happen on change yeah i put it in a new row and we actually get an source the same way we do with the cover and we want to do the same thing that we do for the cover but we want to update this as an image on this uh, user image so uh, now it works let's see yeah it's updated let's maybe find another woman here um it doesn't really matter maybe this one let's see yeah it works and uh, the only small bag is that this bike is still a little bit blue let's see if we can fix it let's go to editable image and uh, in here let's see on drop we are doing this update image and uh, maybe here even let's do if it's not editable then don't do anything just return here and uh, i think we miss one more let's see yeah we also have on frame drop and uh, maybe here we can just put that uh, reset everything so we want to make set is file nearby to false and set is file over to false let's see now if i refresh then if i update this one yeah and the bike is not blue anymore right so um this works we are done with updating the cover and this avatar so uh, i think the next part will be updating those stuff here so the name of the user the username and the bio one thing i forgot about this cover and the photo is we should probably get rid of the files that we already uploaded so let's quickly go back to the upload and here after uploading we want to get rid of this old image so let's see we have file info here and we get this path here that we want to delete after we upload it so after uploading and updating the user we want to do um probably file system and uh, i think it's not delete it's unlink we can do unlink sync and here just the path to the file that is inside file info and path yeah so now we can get rid of all those files yeah let's delete them all delete okay so now we have only three files inside public and let's see if i upload this uh, bike again why not it goes to the public bar just for like one second and then it gets deleted it should be deleted let's see yeah it got deleted now it's not here anymore right uh, so now let's go to our user page so we can update bio and name and stuff so as you can see the name of the profile is here and the username is here and the bio is here the bio is hard coded for now so uh, first we want to have like some kind of edit button here uh, so let's see where do we have those buttons here we have this button with follow let's make this screen a little bigger and uh, we want to see also an edit button if this is our profile so let's maybe first determine if it's our profile so let's do const is my profile equals and we need to check that profile info um id is the same as user info user info mm, don't we get user info here let's see we get username from the query and we get profile info here but we don't have any user info so let's do user info but should be a curly brackets user info from use user info yes now let's see this is my profile if um, profile info is id is the same as user info id let's see this can be null so we need to add question mark here as well and uh, let's see now here where we have the first button uh, is my profile if it's my profile then we want to say my profile yeah so this is my profile because i'm logged in as dane jones but if i go to on me here uh let's see then i don't have this my profile thing uh maybe i can quickly fix those uh those uh, avatars here inside the post content i think it is we have this uh, avatar here uh let's see let's do that inside avatar we have this div 
let's say it will be also rounded full and overflow hidden and uh, let's go back to our user page and uh, well this is not my profile so my profile text doesn't show up but uh, let's go back to the to my profile here and uh, well let's see if it's my profile then i want to show a div with edit button so i will copy this button here that is follow and i will change this to a uh, text to edit profile and the follow button shouldn't be visible if it's not my profile so uh, if not is my profile then we will show this follow button okay so if it's my profile i show this edit profile if it's not my i show this follow button but we'll fix later but for now if we have this um, edit but edit profile button what do we want to do when someone clicks on it we want to change those to inputs so let's say we'll have a stage for this called the uh, edit mode and set edit mode will be use state default will be false all right and now let's fix here on the button that when you click this we will do set edit mode to true yeah and now for this uh, name and username and stuff we can check that uh, for example let's start with this name let's see that if it's edit mode then we want to show an input and uh, with the value of the profile info name any question mark here let's see edit profile we get the input here it's nothing is visible we need to add some class names so let's add uh, maybe on the end class name and the class name for our input will be let's do background of uh, maybe twitter border yeah let's add some padding on the sides of uh, maybe padding everywhere of two and let's do rounded all yeah something like this and uh, so now we are showing both the name and the input for the name but we don't want to show both if it's edit mode we want only to show the input so here where we are showing the h1 with the name so this let's check that it's not edit mode right now no edit mode then we are showing this h1 so like this and uh, now this edit button edit profile uh, let's see we should have like a cancel and save profile if it's edit here uh, so let's see if it's edit profile we have this uh, if it's my profile we have this uh, edit profile mm, but let's also add here that if it's edit mode if it's not edit mode we want to show this uh, button so now no buttons visible but if it is edit mode then we will show two buttons one for um one for a uh, cancel and one for saving so let's maybe copy this one for saving let's say it will be maybe let's start with console console and it will set edit mode to false and it will not change anything and um, another thing is uh, let's make it more like a uh, whitish so background uh, twitter white we have this twitter white color and the text should be black black like this yeah and now also a button for saving so let's maybe add some spacing here margin right of one maybe two and the second button will be for saving or maybe just it should say save profile and it should be blue so let's do twitter blue and the text should be white so let's do text white yeah so now if we hit save we get we can toggle the edit mode and we will fix the saving button later or now let's just uh, fix the inputs first so let's see we have input for our name but we don't have it for a uh, username here but first for even for the name let's add some margin bottom of one yeah and now we can actually do same thing for the username so if it's not edit mode then show the this username that we have here so let's put this thing inside but if it is user mode uh, sorry edit mode 
then we should show an input for this uh, username. So not name here, username. Yeah. And uh, we'll think we can actually even add some, uh, it should be on the next row. Mm, so uh, let's see, maybe those inputs can be inside the divs. Yeah. And even this input can be inside the div. So it will take the whole row. Yeah. And uh, now the bio. As you can see, the bio is hard coded for now. So we will change it to profile info um, bio. Uh, but this should be visible only if it's not edit mode. Yeah. Uh, but if it is edit mode, then we want to display a div with a text area for the bio F text area. And the value will be actually profile info dot bio. But we need to add some class names for this uh, text area. And I will take the same class names that we have on those inputs here. Yeah, so we get this text area. Maybe rounded can be smaller, rounded uh, can be uh, medium, maybe bigger, large, extra large, 2XL, maybe 3XL. 2XL will be good enough, right? And uh, here we can write some bio and uh, it should work, but the text area should be bigger. So let's do a width of full and block here on the text area. So it takes all the space and let's add margin bottom of two instead of one. Maybe even for those inputs, we can increase the margin bottom to two here and two here. So we have more spacing. Yeah. And uh, now we want to be able to save this uh, profile bio information. So uh, let's see, let's add a function for this called the uh, function update profile. And uh, it should send, uh, it will be async because we are going to send data to API endpoint. So we are, let's use Axios because it's easier. We will go with put request because we are updating data, not uh, posting data. And let's say it will go to API slash profile and the data will be, well, everything that we get inside the profile info, but why? Let's wait a little bit. First, I think I forgot that for those inputs, we have these values, but if I write something, it's not updating because I forgot about uh, on change. So on change, we get event. Let's put it in the new row. On a change of the name, we want to set profile info, get the previous value. And inside parentheses, we want to spread the previous value and we want to put the name to be the new name from event target value. So now we should be able to edit the name. Yes. And, um, and uh, now we need to do the same on change for both um, username and uh, bio. So let's do here. But instead of name, we will do username. And now for the bio, let's do the same, but uh, for bio. All right. And uh, this will work. Let's see. Yeah, it works. But the thing is, if I hit cancel, the new value stay and it should reset back to the, to the previous values. So um, the problem is that we are saving this inside the profile info state. And uh, well, let's think. Uh, maybe we can make a copy of this and uh, name this original user info. Yeah, let's make this. So let's do original user info and set original user info. Your state will be empty. And after we fetch profile info, let's also put it in original set original user info response data user. And uh, then when we hit a console. Where is this a console button? Mm, edit mode. Here we have a console. We want to set edit mode to false, but we want also set uh, profile info to the previous values from the original. Maybe we can put it as a separate function. So it will be a little bit cleaner here. And uh, let's call this function console and uh, let's define it somewhere here above. So uh, let's do function cancel. And uh, we want to cancel the changes and we want to put back the changes to profile info uh, from the from the original 
object. So let's get the previous and here we want to return the all previous values, but for bio, uh, but for bio and other stuff, let's do, let's define them here, bio name and username, we want to grab them for, from original user info. Yeah, like this. And then we can put bio name and the username here. Yeah. So now if we do edit profile and we add some numbers here and we hit console, it disappears. But we also need to set edit mode to false. Let's hit cancel. Yeah. Now if we add some numbers here, numbers here, we hit cancel, it disappears. All right. Uh, as you can see, even if we add numbers, it's added here. So this is interesting, but it disappears when we hit the cancel. So it works nice. Uh, but now we want to also save the profile. We want to update profile. So uh, when we click this save profile, let's see where this button is. It's here. Uh, we let's say that instead of this, we will do update profile. We'll call this update profile function. And inside this update profile, we want to send some data. And then we want also to disable edit mode because we are done. Okay, so uh, we want to send data to API profile. What data do we need to send? We want to send, uh, well, we want to send bio and let's grab them from here, const, and let's do bio name and username from profile info. Yeah, and uh, let's send them here. We can just put a bio name and username. And now let's see if we add two here and we hit serif profile, we are sending this name and the username to this endpoint API slash profile that we need to create. So inside API, let's create a new file profile.js and here as always export default function, sorry, async function. Let's call this one handler as always. And then we get a request and response and we need to init Mongoose database. So we'll have a database connection and uh, here down there, what do we want to do? We get a bio name and username from request body. And what do we want to do with it? We want to update this for our current user. So uh, let's do const session and let's grab everything. Unstable get server session. Let me import this one. Same with auth options. We need to import this. Okay, now it's imported. And now let's see. Now we have session. So we have user ID. So let's do something like this user. Let's import user, find by ID and update. And the ID of the user will be from session user ID. And the stuff we need to update is actually bio name and the username, user name. And we need to do a wait here because it's database update. And now let's just respond with OK. OK. And uh, now let's see. I will refresh the page, clear everything here. Let's edit profile, Jane Jones 2. And uh, let's save. And let's see, we get preview. OK. And if you refresh, it worked. Now let's get rid of this too. Let's save. Yeah, works. If we edit this, uh, let's put some bio here and see if it will work. Uh, let's copy this from Elon Musk, put it here, save. Yeah, it worked. If we refresh, yeah, we still have it here. Yeah, so now we can edit our profile. Let's see what happens if we open another profile. We only see this uh, follow button here. That's uh, all right. One thing that is a little broken here is this cover area. So uh, we get a cover here, but it's empty. So let's see. Let's open cover and uh, let's see. We have this editable image, but for this cover, it should be false. Am I correct? Let's try to put the bike here. Well, this is wrong. The avatar shouldn't be added. Let's go to user page. And on the user page, the where is the avatar? Avatar is editable, but it should be only editable if it's my profile. Same with the cover, only editable if it's my profile. So now if I try to put something, it doesn't work because I'm logged in as Jane Jones. But now let's see why the cover is not showing anything. It's not editable, but uh, we should at least see something, right? Uh, let's see. We don't see any image here. Let's see if I add the class name cover. Can we find it 
inside our HTML here. Okay, we get this file drop that is really small. We get this relative here, an episode here. Okay, so it shows this div only if we have any source. And because this is empty, it doesn't show anything. Maybe instead of doing this like this, we can change it to show the image only if we have a source. And this div should be visible for everyone even if we don't have source yeah so now we see this div with uh, flex and some background colors and stuff yeah so now it's fixed so for uh, now it works that for our uh, profile we can update all the information here and even the avatar and this image let's maybe try with something else I will download this one as medium and I will search for holidays holiday why not Let's download medium and uh, inside our app let's update this woman to our new woman yeah and this background or cover with this holidays stuff yeah that looks really nice and we can update stuff here and it works all right so uh, i think that the next part is this follow unfollow button so if i'm on the other person profile I have this follow button that doesn't do anything, but let me go to the user page and let me find this. So we have follow button here. And uh, the thing is that uh, when I click on this button, I want to save in the database that I follow this person. So uh, let's say that this button on click will uh, trigger a function called uh, toggle follow so if we are following then it will unfollow if we don't follow it will follow so as the function toggle follow and now let's see mm, first we need to know if we are following this person or not so uh, let's maybe get this information inside our state somewhere let's do is following and set is following use state default will be false and uh, let's fix that we will toggle this uh, button so let's do set is following and from the previous value we want to get the opposite like this and uh, now if is following then we want to show the uh, unfollow or maybe just following otherwise uh, follow so now but um, even i want to change some uh, class names here so let's say that uh, i will add uh, some if statement here and the thing is that uh, if it's following then i want to be background of uh, twitter white and the text to be um, black if we are not following then i want to be the button to be blue and the text to be white so let's put it like this and we get an error yeah it's here yes it is so now if i hit yeah we are following and if i click i just unfollowed mm, but maybe even if we are following let's add an extra class on hover on hover let's do background of red of 500 so follow maybe 300 yeah i don't know if we need it i will get rid of this um all right but uh, now we can toggle f uh, following here but we want also to save it inside our database so uh, let's say that we'll send a request using axios it will be a post request and uh, it will go to slash api slash followers and the data will be mm, I think we need to only tell what the person what type of person we want to follow or unfollow so let's call this one and uh, destination and the destination will be profile info uh, id all right now we need to create this endpoint so inside api as the new file and for lowers.js and uh, here as always export default async function handle with request response we need to init mongoose database so we'll have some connection to our database and we also need to grab session so let's do session equals and now here unstable get server session with request response as params and also auth options yes and now for the user id inside session user and we want to grab the destination that we get from uh, 
destination from sorry destination destination from request body and uh, we want to save this information somewhere let's maybe create a new model new collection for followers to know who follows let's do a new model here and let's call this one follow follower yes and uh, here let's do cons follower schema equals new schema and uh, when it comes to this information we need to know only the source and destination so source will be who follows and the destination who follows who so uh, the source will be the person that is following and the destination will be the person that is followed okay so source will be uh let's put this like this type of the source will be mongoose um yeah import mongoose uh, types object id and let's say also that it will be required and uh, now the destination will be also object id and required and uh, i think that's all so let's now do follower equals uh, let's change let's check if we have it inside models follower if we don't let's create a new model with a name of follower and follower schema and now we just need to export default follower and we are done here let's go to followers api endpoint and now we can use this model so let's do follower and uh, yeah now it's imported but now we want to know if we are already following this person or not so the same as we did with liking a post let's find existing and uh, so const existing follow equals follower um find one and we want to find by destination destination and we also need to say the what is the source and the source is actually session uh, user id yeah that should work and now if we have existing follow uh, sorry i forgot that we need a wait here if we have existing follow we need to delete it so existing follow i think it's remove yeah a wait here and uh, let's just response with okay or maybe response with just null and otherwise we want to create a follower or create a follow maybe this should be actually called follow and follows but uh, let's do a wait follower and create and here the data will be the same so destination and source will be session user id and uh, after we created let's assign it to just f and let's do a response json f sorry f like this so um uh, this should work let's see what happens if we click the button now let's go to network tab i will clear everything here follow and we get 500 error let's see why cannot read the id of undefined i think yeah i forgot about the wait here for our session let's refresh and again and we created a new follow so that is really good but now if i refresh i don't see this information and uh, this is because on our user page where we initiate this uh, is following we are just setting this to false so when we load the page we are not fetching information is uh, for this profile if we for currently logged in user if we are following this profile or not so well, let's see this information should be probably get from users so here we are fetching for this username david pashko for this user for this profile that we are loading we get information about the user but we don't get information if we are following this person or not so i think we can add it to our users uh, endpoint inside api so let's see here we are fetching a specific user and then we are responding with this user uh, maybe we can add here information like follow if we are following or not and uh, we can grab it from uh, follower and we need to find one where um our id so source is the id from the session so let's do session user id and the destination and the destination will be well let's see i'll put it like this destination will be this profile this user id that we are loading so let's grab user and that 
underscore id because it's from the database here and then we can also respond with information about follow so now if we reload we get 500 error let's see okay i forgot about closing this one thing curly brackets here if i reload we still get an error here yeah i forgot about a wait let's refresh now we get all the information here we are loading the profile you can see we found this follow information so uh, now let's go back to our username user page and here we are fetching this user information so we get this user data but we are not using follow yet so here we can do something like this set is following and we know if the person if we are following this person if we have anything here inside the following so let's do response data and uh, follow and we can just uh, we don't want to save the whole object we will just make it a boolean like this so it will be true if there is an object inside so now if i refresh you can see i get this following because i already follow if i click it i'm not following you can see i can refresh if i click now i'm following okay so i'm logged in as uh, jane jones but uh, well maybe let's try to log out and let's log in as uh, another user and uh, let's log in as uh, john doe yeah pick username okay john is testing and let's tweet this okay and uh, now the problem is that uh, let's say at will, the john will follow jane that on the home page i only want to see my own posts so posts of me so john and the people i follow so only jane but the thing is i also see the posts of uh, david so uh, john shouldn't see this so uh, as you remember on the beginning we implemented here fetching the posts and it's here and uh, let's go to this api endpoint so here no this is model api posts here if we have a get request and we don't have id so this part we are fetching the posts for the home page here for the home page or for a specific parent and the thing is that if we don't have this parent we should select posts for the home page only for the people we follow and ourselves when the author is uh, we are the author so uh, let's maybe fix it so here we have a search filter that if we have an author we are applying this otherwise we are applying parent so uh, maybe i can start by changing this const to let and uh, well let me change this to if we have an author as a param then we want to change search filter to add this uh, author and then if we have a parent then we want to add the search filter and put only this parent uh, so we can get rid of this and now i also want to put here if it's home page then uh, we don't have either author parent so let's do here if no author param and uh, no parent param then we know it's for the home page and if we know if if we know that it's for the home page uh, let's say that we will do console log home page so we can test if it shows up and i will refresh the page and i get the home page so uh, here we need to grab we need to define search filter to only pick the authors for people we follow and ourselves so for let's do search filter will be author should be an array of people and this array of people should be people i follow plus plus myself so um putting myself is simple we just do session user id but then we need to also put a people i'll uh, people i follow or better ids of people i follow we an empty array for now and here we have uh, ids of people i follow and my own user id and uh, to grab the ids of the people who follow let's find let's maybe first find them as grab my followers my uh, my follows my follows can be found with inside this follow collection follower collection and we need to find all the follows and the filter here will be that the source of the follow is my user id so like this and we need to do exit 
exec here at the end because we are finding many uh, objects. So we have this, we need to do a wait here as always with database queries. And okay, I have my follows and now from my follows, I need to grab all destinations. So IDs of people on follow will be actually my follows. And from those, from each, I want to turn the destination, destination like this. Now maybe let's console log those IDs of people I follow. We should get only one ID because the currently logged in user, John, is only following Jane. Yeah, you can see we have only one object here, one object ID. So, uh, and as you can see, I don't see the post of David anymore. I see only of Jane. If I unfollow her, go back to the homepage, I see only my own posts. That's really bad because now I cannot find her. Maybe if I open her profile, Jane Jones. Yeah. If I follow. Yeah. Uh, so this works. So now on the homepage, we are only showing the posts of the people we follow or, um, or our own posts. But uh, for example, on the Jane profile, we can go here and add uh, hi, I'm John. Yeah. And um, on the homepage, we see this reply here and uh, we see her posts because we are following and uh, if we unfollow if we go back we can still open the reply here we don't see the previous post and i think this is this going to be the next thing we need to implement so now the thing is let me show you here elon musk responded to this tweet and as you can see if it's a response we want to show the parent as well. So even if I open this on a separate page, we see this response here, but we also see the parent post here that we responded to. So um, on, uh, let's see, on our post page, we have, I think it's called something with ID, yeah, status here. We are showing, for example, hi, I am John. This was actually a response to Jane and we are not showing the Jane post above, but maybe we should. So um, let's maybe see here if uh, we can grab it. So here we can maybe check if we have a post parent. And if we do, then let's put it inside the div and let's say parent here. So we know we have a parent and uh, maybe let's see how it looks like. What do we have inside? So we are grabbing this post here and we get this post and we have author, but the parent is only the ID and we need to have uh, all the information about parent, not only the ID. So back to API endpoints posts. And uh, here above, we have this get request. And if we have ID, so this is our request because we pass the ID as a param. Uh, we are just fetching the post by ID and populating with the author. And as you can see, we have this author information, but uh, let's also populate the information here about the parent. So let's do populate and uh, let's put here an object because on the parent we want to both uh, populate the parent information of the post but also the author of the parent and post so uh, in here let's put path and the path will be actually parent now if i refresh let me show you idea we get this post i am i am john but we also get the parent. You can see that uh, reply four was from Jane, and but the ID of the author, it's ID of the Jane, but we want to have more information. We want to have also like name of the Jane and uh, image and stuff like this. So even here inside, I will add populate inside here, the first populate. And uh, here I can actually do just um, author. And I think it should work like this. Let's see post with this ID and get parent and I get author of the parent. So I get Jane Jones from the parent. Now let's try to uh, show it here on the post page. We show here parent, but instead let's show post content with the parent post. So post parent. Yeah. And uh, it should be, it should be big as well. Yeah. And uh, let's see. No, it shouldn't be big. The content should be on the right side. So let's get rid of this big. Yeah, but we want some spacing here and we want to have this line. And uh, maybe we can 
fix it here. So um, first, let's maybe put this uh, post content here. And now we can add some class names, uh, but maybe not on this one. Instead, let's do on this one, the parent. Let's say that padding bottom will be five. So we have some padding here, but we also want to put this line here. So let's create an empty div with, uh, let's say the half will be 12 and we'll add the border left of color border twitter border so we have this line here it should be under parent post should be here now we want also to push it to the left so let's say margin left of four more let's do eight too much let's do six maybe five five will work and uh, it should be thicker so let's do border left two yeah that's better um but now we don't want to have any spacing here between let's see where we get the spacing from okay we have this padding bottom from here that we can get rid of yeah and uh, maybe we can do just padding bottom of one yeah and uh, now this spacing here and uh, maybe we can keep this space here we want to do the same space space over here let's make it even thicker like three doesn't work with three let's do four no four is too much let's stick with two and um, let's add some space here let's see how it looks like here here they don't have any space all right so uh, maybe something let's do something like this i'll create a div here that should contain this line and uh, i will position this div so it has this margin left of uh, this and uh, stuff and the half of this div will be 12 but the half of the line itself will be let's say 14 and let's put this line inside this div and now i can actually make this div parent div relative and the line absolute and um, or maybe it doesn't have to be absolute it can be absolute let's do minus top of minus two let's change the half to 16 and let's do minus top four yeah almost there minus top six it's too much five yeah five works let's change the half to maybe 18 no 20 yeah this works we need to push this line a little bit more to the left so i will add some custom styling here and uh, we basically want to push it more from the left let's say that margin left will be 10 pixels that's too much let's do one three yeah this should work and uh, maybe two just two pixels yeah so uh, now now it works nicely so let's see here so hi i am john if we open this we see that it's a response to jane post and if we open her post we can see that she replied to my post and here here we see replies to her post and if we open my post you can see that jane replied and she also has one reply inside that is john here that replied to jane all right um so uh, this works we could actually even show replies maybe on the uh, on the home page i don't know if it's needed yeah maybe we can do this on the home page so index page we are displaying those uh, post contents here but we can actually check here if we have the if we have the parent post parent then we want to put uh, another post content and put it inside the div with uh, another post content but this time from post parent we send all post parent information and let's see cannot read properties of undefined outer name is undefined okay i think we get some kind of old post there that we don't get the name maybe we should just add question mark here let's go to post content whoops post content and on the name let's see like this and here also for the username the previous one or everywhere that we do author username let's put a question mark here yeah so here we have a post but we don't see anything about this post that's weird uh seems like it's a post that we have deleted or a post that we are not fetching no we see this post but not on the home page mm, let's see where we fetch those posts here and um, 
Well, let's see here. We are fetching for the home page and we are fetching for those authors, but we are not populating the parent and stuff. We are we doing we do this only for specific posts for single posts. So let's depopulate and we want to populate the path of parent and for the parent we also want to populate the author. So now if we refresh, yeah. We have this, but now we want also to have a little line there. So um, let's put uh, a div here with a line, but not line like this. Instead, we should uh, put the line as a div. Why not? And it was border left two and border Twitter border color. And the have should be, let's say 12. 12 will be too much, but maybe we can work with this. Mm. Let's see. Well, let's make this uh, div just relative and the line, let's make it absolute. And this, let's make it half of eight and uh, let's the margin left of four and minus top of, I don't know, four, five, maybe here, let's do six. The half of the, let's change to 10. Yeah, that will work. You can add some extra styling to make it look prettier, but uh, for now it will it's good enough. So now even on the home page we see replies that is really nice. So the last cool feature that would like to have is uploading images or GIFs here on the post. So I want to grab an image and I want to drop it there. But it doesn't work with our current form for replies and uh, here this text area. So uh, this component is called uh, something with form post form and uh, the thing is I would like to have drag and drop here as well so as you remember we had this editable image and here we had this drag and drop for images if we want to see the preview for them so um, I was thinking that we can get some part of this code and put it in a component that will be even more flexible and it will work even for those uh, drop and uh, drops here because I don't want to replace any image here I just want to drop an image and it should shows here or sh here or here so uh, so uh, let's maybe create a new component for uploads and uh, it will be upload.js yeah inside components why not and let's do as always x export default uh, function upload and uh, and uh, let's see. First, I want this uh, drop down area so I can drop files to be here. So let's say that uh, this will return a div with class name, uh, for example, border, border of five, border red 500. And inside we'll have children from the props here, children. And now let's go back to our post form and let's see we have this text area here and uh, let's put this text area inside upload we want to put this text area inside upload and uh, let's see nothing has changed let's open this upload thing yeah now we have this border on the text area and uh, maybe we can do border four yeah so it's more visible and now instead of this div with border i would like to add this uh, drop thing so i can drop files into this text area so uh, let's see i can copy this from editable image so i want to get this drop down thing instead of uh, this div so let's put it like this and here we need to close this file drop as you can see we miss all those uh, state information so i will copy this as well so here we have this state and let's put it here into our upload component okay now we have everything uh, but file drop is not imported so let's import this one and uh, this is not uh, defined update image is not defined we want to change it to maybe just upload image so let's do function upload image that will just do uploading okay so now nothing happens here because this file drop that is around this text area is uh, invisible and 
doesn't do anything. So um, let's maybe put here another div and let's put children here inside. And this children is actually the text area. But on this div, let's add a class name of relative. And here, let's do something like this, that if we have a file over, we want to show something um, here maybe before the children is file over then we want to show the text file over so now if i pick the file file over you see file is over we get this text um but instead of showing the text i want to uh, do something else so let's create maybe a div with this blueish background um so uh, if the file is over we can uh, drop the file uh, this text area will be covered with some blue color uh, so here instead of is file over let's do is file nearby or is file over all right and if the file is over let's do div with class name of uh, let's say background uh, of twitter blue and it will be absolute and let's do inset of zero so it will take all possible space now we can see i can drop files there and uh, let's do drop your files here and uh, now we should get the text but let's make it centered so let's do flex and flex uh, and items center and justify center drop your files here maybe drop your images here and uh, that should work but after after we drop the files what do we want to do we want to tell our children our text area that we are uploading an image so how we can do this we can actually pass this all this information to um to our children so we can call the children as a function actually and uh, tell or maybe not like a function let's start let's first start by uploading an image if we when we drop it and uh, let's also show this uh, is uploading maybe not uh, is uploading but let's start by uploading an image if we drop it so um we want to upload the image the same way we did it with editable image so we can just grab all of this i guess and we can put it here and we need to pass this files and event here on upload image so uh, we don't have any on change here so we need to get rid of this but now maybe um let's see what will happen so i will open my network tab and let's see if i drop this image here type is not defined all right so uh, the thing is that we are sending this with a type that is undefined let's put a post here now let's see what will happen we are uploading and it kind of worked but let's go to our upload endpoint and let's see how it looks like here okay i think that it tries to update the user even with this type of uh, post but it shouldn't it should only try to update the user if the type is um, cover or the type is uh, i think it was image uh, let's see if i refresh the page i should grab the users and see a user yeah it was image so update photo of the only for the user only for the cover and image if it's something else like uh, you know if it's for example photo type photo then uh, or type post sorry then don't update user stuff and uh, i think we don't uh, need this variable here we don't need to send the user information right let's see what happens on upload once again does it just work yes it does we get the source to the to the image on aws on s3 bucket so um here inside our upload we get this json with all the information and we need to grab the source so src equals json.src okay and with this source what do we want to do uh we want to notify our children somehow let's say that uh, we will get children but we will also get the property of on upload finish and here we'll call it on upload finish and we'll pass this source all right uh, we could actually add also uh, on on upload start on upload finish uh, i don't know if it's needed for now let's see let's go back to our post form 
and we have this upload here we want to add the on upload finish and what do we want to do when something is uploaded when we upload an image we want to maybe show it under the text area so we need a state for this so the const images and set images and this will use state and default will be an empty array we have an error here yeah because this is empty on upload finish we get a, a source to this image the destination the link and we want to add this to the images so let's do set images we get the previous value of the images we turn this as the array we return all the previous images with the new source right now let's try to under the text area let's put all the images so if images length is uh, bigger than zero then let's uh, do images map so we can map through them for each image i want to open a div like this and uh, let's maybe just emg and let's uh, display it like this so now if i upload something let's see what will happen we get an image underneath that is really cool uh, but um, if i do a test image and i tweet it i don't get the image and after i tweet it this should be cleaned as well so let's fix it uh, after we send the tweet to the server let's also reset the images to back to empty array and as you can see we are sending only the text and parent information not the images so let's send it as well images where we create post our post so uh, now we need to add those images to our post model so we have author text because we can add text and but now we can also add images so let's do images here and images will be type of array of string and uh, that's all i will just uh, reset my app here and now let's see on the uh, api part so api slash posts and here where do we have this uh, here we have get request and here we have post request so when we are creating a post we are getting the body from the body we are getting the text and the parent but we should also get images and we can just actually put them here where we create our post so let's do maybe again uh, test image two and let's put it here yeah it showed up i can tweet and let's see it has been uh, saved i guess it has been sent let's see posts payload yeah i sent this inside images and it has been saved i guess but it's not visible so let's go post content where we display our post and uh, let's see we are showing the texts here but under the text we should also display the images so um here will be for small version of posts but i think we have another place where we put text yeah here so on those two places here and here we should display images i will create a small sub function for this uh, so uh, inside my post content i will do a function show images and here inside um of course we'll get images here as a property and this function will return some html and it will check if the images length is bigger than zero then it will do images map and for each image for each image it will create a div with an image inside with an image inside like this now we can use this function somewhere here underneath yeah show images and uh, same for the big version of the post so now we can open this here this didn't work let's see okay it complains because we have inside this link several children we want only one so let's those two inside the div let's refresh yeah test image two and it works even here on the home page it works really nice but uh, the thing is that when i drop an image here I want to see that it's uploading so uh, let's see um, and maybe I want to make it smaller because if I put several images here uh, well then you can see I have this text area here and tweet button here and there is a lot of images here in between so let's go to our post form and let's see where do we list our images so uh, 
here we have images. So for uh, for each image, let's make the half of it of 10. Yeah, something like this, almost. Uh, but uh, the image itself should also have some classes. Mm, let's do have auto and with auto. And uh, well, let's see. Let's create a parent div for all images and let's put it here inside. And uh, let's do maybe have of 10. So the images are really small. Let's make it 24 maybe. Same with this 24. And here maybe let's use flex. Yeah, so the images are next to each other. Mm, and let's do margin bottom of margin on the top and the bottom of one. Maybe not on this one, but on each specific image. Let's do margin on the top and the bottom of two and even on the sides. So let's do like this here. Let's do some indentation from the left side. So minus X will be two. And uh, this looks really nice. And uh, we are displaying images really nicely. But I would like to know if something is uploading. So how can we tell to our this component from this component if something is uploading? Well, we could actually add a new property here on upload start. But um, there is an also another way of doing this. So I will go to this upload component and I will show you something. We are just displaying the children like this, but instead we can uh, take this children as a function. So now this will not work because children is a method or a function. So let's go back here and update this. You can see that this is a function right now. And uh, this is a component that we are displaying. So uh, let's cut it from here. And now instead of putting component here between the upload, we need to pass a function and the function can be passed like this. So uh, like this, I will just make, I will just make it uh, like this so we can see it better. So we have this function and inside I can do that this function will return this text area. So now it works again. The thing is that uh, the function is called from here, but we can also pass some params here. So this is the magic of some advanced React stuff. So let's pass information about is uploading. So now here we can know if it's uploading and let's say, let's put here the text area inside this div. And if it's uploading is uploading, then we will say uploading. So now let's test to upload something. You see it's uploading and after it's done, it disappeared. Right, uh, so instead of having this uploading text, let's maybe even put those images here inside our upload thing. So let's see, we can drop files here and when it's done, it shows here. But I want also to display a preloader here. So a spinner if something is uh, loading. So let's say that uh, here inside this flex, we will do something like this is uploading. If it's uploading, then I will put another div with uh, class names and it will behave of 24 and width of 24. Same as for the images, margin of two. And uh, here inside, I want to put this uh, spinner thing. So uh, we had the spinner, I guess, inside the editable image. Let's see, we had this pulse loader. So I will copy it from here and pull it also here. Okay, so now if I maybe upload something, you see I have this spinner thingy here, but let's add some more styling. I want to this box to be background of Twitter border and I will put it as flex, flex um, because I want to do item center. So this pulse loader will be centered and justify center. Let me just refresh. And now if I drop something here, you see, it's uh, doing like this. Then we get the image. I can put more, yeah, and it's visible. Now uh, let's test it with two photos and I will tweet it, but we don't want to show the photos like this, but instead uh, let's go to post content. And on the top we had this show images function and uh, let's add some class names. So we will make this thing flex. Yeah, and I think this is a little bit 
better. So uh, let's do a test to photos again. And let's maybe download something. So um, sun and let's search for square photos. Let's take this one medium and this one medium. And let's upload this one and also this one. Yeah, tweet. And now it's a little better. So uh, now we are done with the image upload for the posts. So we can open this. And uh, you know, it works even though it should work even with uh, GIFs. So let's do a GIFs uh, search. Uh, we can go with, I think, Tenor search engine. And uh, let's search for puppy. And let's take this one. And I will put it inside my files here. And now I can use it here. Let's add text hello there. And let's do it. Yeah, it works. Maybe we can add some more spacing here. So uh, first let's do if we don't have any Im images. So let's do images length is zero. Then let's just turn empty string. Uh, but if we have images, let's do margin and the question mark here just to be safe. And here let's do margin on the top and the bottom of four. No, that's too much. Let's do two. Yeah, that will work. So we have some spacing under the text. Yeah, but uh, this will work. We could actually even add some spacing here in between the images. So uh, let's say that uh, for each image div, we will have a margin of, let's say, two on each side. So we can get rid of this. But here on the parent div, we can have a negative margins on the left and on the right too. Yeah, maybe it could be a little bit smaller. Let's try with something like this. Yeah, this should work. Looks really nice. And uh, the likes should still work. Yes, it does. So everything works nicely. We can like photos. We can, uh, let's maybe reply with a photo. Does it work? Yeah, it works. It looks a little bit weird, but yeah, we can do a uh, check this sunlight to it and we can respond with and with images so that is really nice now before we deploy our app there are a few things that i would like to fix that could fail during the deployment so first is that inside avatar we put those classes as class and it should be class name instead all right then there are a few loops that we are using for mapping our for mapping through our collections and also for example everywhere where we search for that map so for example here in post content you can see that we are looping through images but we don't have any key here that we should have so let's say key here will be an emg and now also i think inside post form let's see uh, map and uh, yeah here you can see we have images as well so let's do key equals emg and another is on the post page somewhere here we have some mapping as well yeah we do let's add a key here and the key here can be just reply id do we have any more mappings here no uh, and I think there is another one on the index page because we display all the posts on the index page. Yeah, here we have as the key. And let's say that the key here will be post ID. And uh, I think the last one will be on the login page where we loop through all possible providers. Yes, here we are looping with map. And here on this div, let's just add a key of provider ID. Or we could do provider name, doesn't matter. All right, so we have this. And uh, well, the last thing that we need to fix is actually inside our upload API endpoint. You see, we are uploading to the public directory and I was doing this so we could easily see the files inside this directory. But the problem is that Versal and other um, deployment providers, uh, hosting services don't like this. And instead we could just, we should just get rid of this param. So the location for our files will be picked automatically. So for example, now let's see what location will I get here. Let me just grab any unsplash photo so you can, so we can test it. Let's Let's take this one medium download and now let's see i will open console here and go to network and i will make it a little bigger and now let's see well where we will have this image where i upload so upload the file like this you can see we have upload it's pending we have preview here we have file info and as you can see it was saved here inside var folders uk and then the file name 
So uh, here inside, we need to update the file name because right now we can see that we are using, we are taking this path value and we are splitting by the slash and we are taking the second part. So the first element here. So it will be folders every time. So instead, let's take uh, the last element here. So uh, when we are splitting, we can pick the last element of this array or we can slice this array first. Let's do slice and we, we can do that we will slice to get only from minus one element so only this element but it will be still an array so i will just add a zero here so now you can see that uh, we don't print a uh, file name anywhere here but uh, let's try to upload again to make sure it works let's see network upload yeah everything works we get this url and let's open this one and it looks nice right so now i will just create the repo on my github so now we create new new repository name let's call this one twitter loan public yes and let's create a direct uh, create repository yeah, now we just do git init yeah and now let's see if we have a git ignore file yes we do i will just add here let's see what do we get inside let's see git status first and let's see what stuff do we have here we have git ignore components all right i think that everything that should be ignored is already ignored so we just get git add everything and let's do git commit with message initial commit and we are going to push it to master and uh, let's add this remote and now we can push it okay now we have all our files now let's go to versal i will add new project from my git repository i will select my repo twitter clone stall twitter clone import and we don't need any team we we need to configure our project to add all environment variables so i will add them now i will open my env and now we need to add all those variables here so let's add this one and go client id value add go client secret and mongodb uri and s3 access key and s3 secret access key and and now i think we can deploy and it's uh, building our project we get some warnings but it's okay okay now the build is completed and uh, yeah now it is deployed ray so now let's try to open this our project so we get this url here so we get a small error here let's see what it is view function logs and let's see missing secret and we probably forgot about one yeah uh, i forgot that the uh, next auth needs also a secret that we need to add so uh, let's see it's called it's called next out secret so let's add it now overview source i'll go to the project and now let's go to settings and now let's see where do we have this uh, those environment variables environment variables here now we need to add another one called the next out secret now let's just add some random string here and let's add it now it should work let's go to overview now let's go to deployments yeah we just need to redeploy this so let's open this latest deploy and let's click redeploy redeploy okay now it's deployed let's open our project now we can sign in let's sign in yeah and uh, it works let's see if we can add some photos here so i'll take for example this one download medium let's open our application here and let's try to upload test tweet and let's tweet this one yeah everything works so that's all for today i hope you enjoyed the project if you did please click the like button and subscribe if you want to see more videos like this one have a nice day and see you in the next video.